<laughs> um, for the podcast crowd, it says help on a sign from Kratzy with a frightened face. And, and I like the Big League Chew shirt as well. That looks fresh. Great. Can see that. What's, well, uh, what's going on? Where the hell are you? I'm in the, uh, I'm in the corner. I, I'm in timeout for two hours. I'm at the corner and I'm down in Virginia right now visiting, visiting my mother-in-law, visiting my sisters. They live down here. So get to, get to do the show on the road. Yeah, I love that. Well, you sound fantastic. And just cool. like I told Max Muncy the other day, your internet connection is elite. Okay, so Thank keep you. it that way, please, for two Thank hours. We deal. have Mark Bowman from MLB.com. He covers the Atlanta Braves' big following. Braves country is nuts Dude. because they're so good. They did a great job building that ballpark and the whole town around it. I mean, anything goes on, like because I'm very hooked to Twitter these days, and Braves world is commenting left and right. It's awesome. And that game last night was the game, of, maybe the game of the year so far. It was phenomenal. I mean, the plays that were made, uh, the, the catch by Soto in the outfield. I mean, everything you could think of. Um, the, the freeze, which we'll get into later. He needs to pick it up. That's the only, that's the only problem I got with the Braves right now <laughs> is the freeze. But, yeah, it was phenomenal. The, it just seems like the Braves get better and better each year. And there's names you're like, oh, yeah, they're good. But, and then next thing you know, they're batting 300 or they're pitching. Their ERA is phenomenal. But um, they're just doing it, man. Their fans are everywhere. They're kind of like the Yankees a little bit now. Watch out. There's a lot of Braves fans everywhere. Well, and you know, because in the South, there's a lot of states that don't have teams. And yes. the Braves also had the whole Turner thing yeah. for a lot of people growing up where yeah. they were on TBS. Mm -hmm. I, I used to see it's like you could watch the Braves every night. They were on TBS. It was easier for me to watch the Braves than it was to watch the Mets or the Yanks. The Who's channel this? was Who's easier. this? Ready? Not batting for your Braves, Chipper Jones. <laughs> Is that good or no? <laughs> That's really uh, I don't good. Want to bet. I try to remember. I forget the, what the, what was the announcer's name? Oh, my God. Who was the head announcer back in the day? That was good. Who was it, Kratzy? Do you remember? No, I don't remember. I didn't have cable, man. I had, we just had the local, <laughs> local, local you didn't channels. Have cable growing up? Are you joking? No, I didn't have cable, man. We got. I, I graduated from high school, and my Wait, parents what? got cable like Come on, man. one this week later. Breaking news of the day. You grew up without cable. Did you have five uh, channels. We had yeah, we had antennas, so we might have had seven channels. We were we were doing it. You didn't have ESPN. Not a chance. Is he? He's got some Amish in him. Yeah, what? What is he going on here? A little Amish. Yeah, no, just no, That's no amazing. cable, man. Had to be outside. God bless you. What man. was the reasoning? Was it was it not wanting to pay the bill? Was it hey, we don't want the kids going on TV all day? There had to be something behind. I mean, this. I, I think it was definitely the kids being on on TV all day. You know, they had to set my they had to set screen time limits before screen time limits were a thing for me. You know, I wanted to be on the Nintendo all the time, but no, nah, man. Like cable was maybe, maybe some of it had to do with the the cost of cable, but. Our TV was in the basement, so it was like it wasn't in the main room. And no, all, all I really – I didn't watch a ton of TV. I watched as much as I could, but no, no, no cable. I know it, it, sounds, it sounds crazy, but no cable. Yeah, you do a show with someone every day. You learn some crazy Oof. shit. God bless It's man. real. Hey, We're getting real on Friday. I got to be honest with you. I, I love it now with all the – electronics going on now we need to start incorporating that man get outside more to these young kids let's yeah, go you can watch foul territory on your phone outside Boom. it's fine or just no yeah, put it on <laughs> you know blast it, blast it on there and play the game yeah, yeah exactly all right let's get right to it okay because there's a lot of news to cover and then we've got our interviews mm. so todd frazier we have a problem here we go Oh, man. <laughs> this is a good one. Today. Hey, we, let, let's set it up first. I, I'll set bring it. you, you know, because sometimes yeah. you, you sit in your Don seat and I bring you the problem, okay? How you doing? Let's go. Okay. So, Todd Father, I mm. got an issue here. Mm -hmm. I'm selling jersey patches. Cool, right? We love all want to make money. Yeah, we right? do. We love yeah, money. We, do. we got space on the jersey. We're not going to overflow it. Just, but right, just right A little there. patch right, right here, there. okay? Here's the problem. So it's a little unique. Mm -hmm. It's a hospital. It's New York Presbyterian. Okay, beautiful, fine, right? Beautiful. The patch is huh. like a double whopper. It, <laughs> it takes up the whole damn arm, oh, you know. Boy. And this isn't the steroid <laughs> era anymore. So we now have you know biceps that are taking up the entire uniform from everyone. New York uh, Presbyterian has the biggest damn patch I've ever seen. They're getting uh, more pub. They're getting their money's worth in the first five seconds. So what are we doing here? This is going to be on the Mets jerseys. Bring us over here again. 
here's the, here's the issue, folks. When you're throwing a ball, you don't want to be worrying about your arm sleeve. So first, Stevie Collins, we, Collins, we got to minimize the size of this one. Let's minimize the size. Second off, you said it yourself. The colors are, are more like Philly colors. So we're going to have to change the color, too, to more Mets appropriate, like you said. So I've heard some comments on here. You know these New York fans are funny. The, I heard somebody say the patch is going to ruin arm momentum. Kids are going to be having <laughs> surgery with the weight of this thing. Let's just minimize it. Presbyterian, God bless you. You're getting a lot of pub right now. This is all you needed right here. And you know what? It's the New York Mets, as usual. Something <laughs> always happens. <laughs> Fix the patch, Stevie Cohen. I know you will. Talk to the guy who got that patch first off. And, you know, we'll talk to him later. Might, might, need, to be re- might need to be removed. <laughs> and that's my business. So come and bring him to me. I'll give him a good talk. And maybe I'll give him a warning. But, yes, <laughs> fix that patch, man. Holy cow. <laughs> That was epic. Oh, man. I, I have some support for that, too. So we have a couple tweets that we'll run through. Yes. I, I did hear that they're – oh, this is my favorite, actually. Laura Albanese. Um, so also part of, of the Mets agreement, fans who deliver a baby at New York Presbyterian facilities will be given a Mets onesie. And so many people were responding like, oh, wait, are they God. serious or are they kidding? And then this is great. Babe, babe, I know Mount Sinai is closer. <laughs> But can you hold it so we can make it to Presbyterian for the Mets onesie? Hey, they are big. Hey, listen, you want your kid to have a onesie? You know where to go. New York Presbyterian, you're doing it up. God bless you, man. Keep doing good things. And this is even better. Let's go. They look like they look like they look like NASCAR. Like that patch was absolutely ginormous. They wouldn't have to, especially I think 20, isn't 20 uh Pete Alonso, isn't that the... Yes. yes, he is. He doesn't need to wear that stupid elbow guard anymore. He's just got that patch. <laughs> He's got the patch guard by Evo Shield. Yeah, it's tough. You, you remember when you used to get the soccer? You get the soccer yes. patches from the other team yes. after them, they gave it to you. Whenever I got the big one, I was excited. You know, I was juiced. But now it's like, all right, the, wait, wait, you can't. Like, for me, I got my arms aren't big enough. The patch would be like this. Like, come on, man. That'll bother the heck out of me. So, again... We're in the big leagues. It's an easy adjustment. Just like the rules changes, we're going to make the adjustments, Steve. The only thing, and I know the Mets will make the adjustment. The mm. thing that I was uh, reflecting back on was during the World Baseball Classic, we hammered the Great Britain jerseys. Yes. And they never fixed them. They never Not fixed those Great Britain jerseys. It's like, but, you work with places that could swing a jersey together in five seconds, and we never fixed it. But those. it was in the front. So you got room to move, move maneuver the shirts going yeah. back and forth. The side, I mean, it's just a new – every time you make a move, like you're feeling – here, you got movement. You, you can you know, pop it out a little bit. But this, this is for life. Well, here's uh-huh. the question, right? This is for life. That's, that's for the moneymaker. <laughs> yeah. So should there even be patches there? Like, would they bother you? Even if it's half the size, they're going to bother you because you feel it? Or would you rather have it, like, s- somewhere here? No, I, I think it's something where they take the jersey and hand sew it on. Like, without – you know, put the Presbyterian church, uh, church, Jesus, Presbyterian. Like printed on. Hospital. Yeah, printed on. Why, why is it not a print? Yeah, I, that, that's where I'm confused. But It's 2023. We can't put a print on? We got to put an actual. They didn't buy the whole season. Suburb. Pa- uh, Too much work. Soccer patch Too on Too much there? work. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's confusing, but like I said, make the adjustment. Yes. That's all. That's Uncle it. Steve's on it, yeah. okay? He said there's already an agreement in place to alter the new yes. uniform patch for New York Press. They're Philly colors. It should be more Met appropriate. St- Stevie yes. knows. Oh, he knows. You yeah. know, he gets it. There'll be, there'll be a conversation just but like let, we had here. Yes. But let me, let me ask this question. Let me take the other side of it. Like, is Presbyterian, are they, uh, are they like, hey, we paid for this size. Like, we want the full billboard. I mean, mm-hmm. this is what they're, you know, they're like, well, we paid for this. For the four and a half inches? Yeah, they paid. They paid for all of it. Like, you know, is there some kind of agreement? Hey, if you if you make it smaller, you know, we gotta get two patches. We gotta get a patch on the hat too, like right on the side. There, there definitely could be. Like, maybe there was an agreement to have that size. So, uh, that's another adjustment to be made. I'm calling yeah. them though if they're complaining about that, which they won't. And I'm saying you already got. 5x your return based on the story alone because they did nothing wrong they're just a hospital saying we want to buy a patch they've done absolutely nothing wrong so um i feel like the problem will be handled now thanks fresh you got it thank you next problem i have our our friends our partners at bet mgm throwing this tweet we were going back and forth last night on a number of things but i like this one 
who will be the best pitcher Oof. in baseball in five years? And I replied and said we'd cover it on the show today. So who wants to start? Kratzy, you got a guy for us? Best pitcher in baseball in five years is? Man, after I even said it when we talked about it, you know, I feel like the easy one is just going right down to Miami to Sandy Alcantara. Mm -hmm. But for, for discussion's sake, I think our mind always goes to always goes to starting pitchers. Like, don't sleep on Emmanuel Classe. Like, a closer that's going to be around in five years, 30 years old, like, he could be – he could be an Edwin Diaz type of closer. So it's not just, you know, your Logan Gilbert, somebody that I thought of too, was, you know, kind of on the come up in, in Seattle. But, I, you know, I really – I have a tough time <laughs> betting against anybody but Sandy right now because he's, he's a workhorse and he gets after. He's already got one Cy Young. He could be – in five years, he'd be looking at his third one. I, before we get to ours, I heard there was some back and forth, or I saw it too, between you and – Bet MGM because somebody named Chuckles <laughs> goes probably Kratz. And they said, what a career arc that would be. And then you replied, I'm a great BP pitcher. Do you Appreciate throw a great you, BP? P oh. All catchers do. Luscious do, right? That's yeah. like a well known, unwritten rule kind of thing. If yeah. you got a catcher out there, oh. It's, it's really the. It's it's the arm slot. It's the you know your short arm slot. It's always going to be four seam. You're never getting some random cut. And yeah, it's it's Lush's BP. You can ask the boys at Doc, the high school I coach at. It's legit BP. There's there's very few things I I boast about besides my TikTok legacy and <laughs> my batting practice. But <laughs> the legacy continues, just like the Masters. Yes, beautiful, exactly. <laughs> Who you got? Who's your best pitcher I, in five I mean, years in the sport? <laughs> Remember, it's five years down the road. Like I was looking up, think, Sandy's thirty-two in five yeah. years, which is still fine. But I'm yeah. saying, like, you know, guys regress at some point. You could call me crazy, but I'm I'm sticking with Shohei Otani, man. I I still think I don't care what age he is. Uh, the Japanese they age well, man. They're like fine wine. So I'm gonna stick with him. People are like ah, they might say he might injuries this and that with the arm hitting a lot on him. But I, I don't see him slowing down for one, and I just see him keep getting better and better. So for me, it has to be Shohei, and you know, eventually, what, I mean, we never know what's going to happen. Maybe he just becomes a hitter. I mean, maybe he just becomes a pitcher. I don't see that. But what he's doing right now, I could see in five years still being the same. I got Spencer Strider. I'll go Strider at 24. In five years, he'll be 29. And he's just getting going in terms of figuring himself out as a pitcher. Yeah. He only needed to use two pitches last year. Yeah. Now he's starting to mix in the changeup <laughs> a little bit more. I mean, five years from now, he might have four pitches. I got his rookie card signed, so that's that's a good sign for I me. got you. I appreciate exactly. that. So and right now, odds-wise, for NL Cy Young, as of last night, mm -hmm. the favorite was Alcantara. Of course. And Strider was two. That's Strider awful. looked filthy yeah. last night. The yeah. only thing that would hold him back on the short term from, say, winning a Cy this year, in yeah. my mind, is if the Braves are still being careful with him. You know, like, guy in sure. his low to mid-20s, sure. they're like, eh, you know, we don't want to get too close to 200 or too far over 200 innings where Alcantara's going to – Alcantara's on the Marlins. He's going to go, listen, we're not making the playoffs. Get the hell off my mound. I'm going nine today. <laughs> exactly. Strider doesn't have the same pull because they're going to yeah. go, hey, dude, you got to play an extra month of baseball. Exactly. But in five years – when he can just rack up 215 innings or something like that. Yeah. I, I it think could be, it could be some young something. cat coming up all of a sudden in, in, in like three years. Yes. Boom. Just taking off. Like kind of like, um, you know, DeGrom kind of did. Or Strider. Kind of last year, no one yeah. was talking about well, it. Yeah, until... he, I think, yeah, he did great. But same time, like, yeah, we weren't really like, and he's still not, I don't think he's still in that conversation yet. Okay. Of being like, oh, listen, he's top five. Don't you don't me. think he's a Cy Young contender in the National League? I, I, I didn't say that. I, I do. Not yet. It's, no? it's game. T he's only pitched two games. I, I want. I want to see more over the long haul, Eric. I mean, at the I, end of the day, you know, career years. He he's still got a lot, long way to go for me. I think. I think you look at a guy. I, I equate him to a hitter who is just absolutely unleashing everything he's got on every swing. And I think Strider's fastball. Everybody's fastball regresses except for Justin Verlander and anybody in the early 2000s. <laughs> like, your fastball regresses when you're already at 99 to 100. And if this change-up thing, you know, if it, if it hits, yeah, great. You know, he's going to need to mix that in. But that fastball, all of a sudden, you saw what happens when it gets flat. 
it the ball was flying in the playoffs. Like it was he couldn't he couldn't shut it down. And I think a guy like Strider, he's got to really be able to work on that secondary stuff to be what we're talking about, like a top five pitcher. And I would agree with you, Todd. I don't think he's a top five pitcher right now. I would I would take the field. If you're if you're taking Strider for the Cy Young, I'm taking the field. Well, duh. I mean, that gives you that, <laughs> hey, that, that was, gives that you was the lot. easiest comment I've ever heard coming Cold out of like, like he said that so smooth. Like, I'm taking the field. I'm like, taking the rest is, of the pitchers I'm on the waiting planet. for a comment like, why aren't you saying the same thing? Well, duh. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Hey, no, no doubt. doubt. Hey. My thing is hey. I don't think the fastball though. I get it, is going to decline <laughs> in his 20s still. Like, we see it start to dip. I could see, yeah, a guy like that, he's in his early 30s, and you're like, hey, now he's only sitting 93, 4, 5, whatever. But for me, I just think five years from now, now if you ask me seven years from now, the answer might be different. But five years from now, I could see it, especially if he adds to his repertoire and because of the zip he has on his fastball. I mean, last year, what he was able to do really with – two pitches and often he would just use the, the heater for basically the first few innings yeah. um, to me is special. So yes, there's injury risk and there's fastball reliant risk, but that's where I look at a guy like him and I'm like, I think he can punch out the world. That's the other important part for me. I think, and this is crazy front offices are going to value swing and miss out of pitchers more than ever because of shift restrictions. In my opinion, because there are balls already getting through that weren't getting through before. So if you're a contact, I just think that's the way front office brains think. Every time a ball is put in play, there's a risk that something can happen. Yeah. If a ball is not put in play because my dude's striking out the world, then he is more valued to me. That was already the case. Yeah. Now a base hits are coming through left and right. Like you see a little dribbler and it gets through the infield or up the middle's back, which is cool. But that means if you're a contact guy, they're going to ding you. So for me, that's what gives Strider a little more oomph. What do you think, I don't, Brad? I don't think also, I don't, wait, one more thing. In the playoffs, he was coming off. He hadn't pitched for like a month and a half. And then he just, oh, here, you're back. And the, I think they he had it for like, what, three innings? And I would have been like, okay, good, you're done. You haven't pitched more. I mean, he hadn't pitched at all in a long time. They should have just pulled the plug quicker. I, I And I'm not saying his velocity is going to go down. When I say a, a down tick in his fastball, what you see is you see guys – that are like that, that don't have that secondary solidified, you know, a third pitch that you can throw in there maybe 10 to 15% of the time, that fastball, they catch up to it. And not that they're catching up to his 99. It's just the same perceived velocity is not the same. And you just get that down tick in, you know, I would say in three years from now, Strider has to make adjustments being a shorter pitcher too that are going to keep his fastball relevant. You know, is he going to throw one that cuts a little bit? Is he going to throw one, you know, is he going to mix in that change up 15 to 20% of the time? That's where I'm seeing it. I don't think his velocity is going to go down in the next five years. And I hate when guys are like, oh, well, you never know about injury. Like every single person we bring up today, you don't know about injury. There's yeah. nobody. That's always, that's a mute point. That's like my saying, I'll take the field over Strider. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's mute yeah no i agree i mean my only thing i agree with that i mean you can't completely predict injury the only thing that i can look at is for injury age right guy that's especially in his, his mid to upper 30s the just the chances are data wise that he could be at more of an injury risk and if you've been injured a ton in the past yeah. right like you know we, we might get into Eloy jimenez is hurt again with the hammy he's pissed about it mm. it's happened a lot Tyler O'Neill was a big story this week. He's frustrated. He's had the hammy stuff. <coughs> Another yep. name. Like Nick Senzel, right? Yeah. Great. I mean, you know. Did you play with Nick? I did not. Okay. But he he was probably still in the minors before yes. he came up when yep. you were with Cincy. And it's a talented guy. Sure. He just he's he just has had chronic injuries all over all over the body. And he he just it's not a guy I'm banking on right now to, to be a big player anymore because he's been hurt a lot. Track record. That's it. Track That's record. it at the end of the day. What is your track record? Eloy Menace. Sorry to say, I mean, I, I guess I don't know how much you build that hamstring up. It's still a problem. So yeah. what what is the next step for these guys that do have that track record? But it's very frustrating. Injuries, in, injuries stink. Let's run through the injury report right now. So let's start off with Justin Verlander. This is good. All right. We, we do a little Mets hater action, and now yeah. we'll do a little Mets love. Bring them back Because up. they've had an okay start to the season, but Verlander hit the shelf. We found that out on opening day with the shoulder issue. And it sounds like he is going to be back very, very soon. He up progressing well. I um, feel like okay. I really turned a corner a couple of days ago. The 
kind of general soreness that I was having is, is really dissipating quickly. Um, you know, so just kind of uh, uh, you know, all positive signs, just waiting for that to really completely go away before I step on the gas. But I've, able, I've been able to um, keep throwing and also increase my intensity of throwing up to like 75%. So I'm um, just kind of hovering at that level for, I mean, uh, there's still, I mean, I can't give you an exact date, but I feel like I'm really close to being able to, um, you know, take the leash off and, and start getting after it and build up. And thankfully being able to continue to throw, hopefully that build up is not that long, um, you know, as opposed to being shut down for a couple of weeks, keeping the shoulder moving and being able to, to stay at that threshold is, is a big benefit in these situations. Okay, so JV sounds also like he does not necessarily want to. You're good, Jesse. You can move. It's yeah, it's, it's, it's 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 live digital. We're good. <laughs> it's the real life. Jesse man. We got we got the the production assistant behind the scenes, just absolutely hustling his ass off every crushing day. It. It's crushing You're good. It we, you needed day. the cameo. It's good. Yeah. Is there somebody behind me? <laughs> okay, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. There's always someone behind you fixing a table. Listen, this is. I don't mean to interrupt you, but this is a good sign because usually when these injuries come around. They come back, rehab, the next thing you know, it's like, well, I still have a little something. Or, you know, uh, I, I, I don't feel like I want to give it 100. He feels like he's almost there giving 100%. I mean, 75%, I'll take that every day of the week from a Justin Verlander. So, for me, that's a great sign for Mets. He looked calm. I'm a big guy of, of, of looking at guys. You know, I'm watching. I, I see his body language. He looks comfortable. He looks confident. He looks like a guy that's ready to pitch. Not like the old say, yeah. It felt okay. I'm going to need a lot more to go, but he felt he looked comfortable. He's excited. I feel like he wants to get going and show the, you know, the people in Queens what they got, and they're going to go from there. So that is very good for the Mets. It's funny he said that he probably wants to avoid a rehab assignment, which, yeah. you know, at 40 and when you're with older, his track yeah, you record, want, you he can do, do it. He's like, screw that. I want to, I want yeah. to use the bullets during a, a yeah. big league game. Buck Showalter also spoke and said – quote, he's progressing really well. He'll be ready as quickly as that injury would dictate. We're being pretty careful about it, which I understand, mm. Kratzy. I mean, you're going to have a guy who's super amped to show what he's got with his new team that just paid him a ton of money, but the Mets are hopefully in this thing for a marathon. Yeah, and you got to trust. I'll always say it, man. Like, you get a, you get a guy like Verlander, you're going to trust what he knows his arm feels like. So, it, it the whole like pitching 70 to 80%, like, like what is 70% of a hundred miles an hour? Like, <laughs> you know, and to me, <laughs> true. I need to see, I need to see, I need to see what it looks like when the one thing he said, he hasn't thrown one a hundred percent yet, but I trust him, but I need to see what it feels like when he throws it a hundred percent. I need yeah. to, cause if he, if he goes no rehab assignment, and the first outing, he only gives me four. Like, okay, like I got to make sure that my my lineup is set, my my rotation is set because they're sending somebody down when he comes back into the rotation. It's not just like, ah, oh, well, you know, I'll rehab and I'll, I'll I'll be fine. I'll go four innings. Okay, well, that taxed the bullpen because you're not going seven the next time. So I'd like to see you get get your four inning outing out of the way in the minor leagues and then come up and give us your five and then your six and then then you're ready to go. But again, you got to there's a certain amount of millions of dollars that you got to trust. Hey, yeah, we trust you, JV. Like you're going to be in the Hall of Fame. You know what you need to do. You've had shoulder injuries before. And so you do you. Yeah, it's um that's him. He's a veteran guy at the end of the day. And if you don't trust your veteran guys, you've got a problem. So I'll leave it at that. Listen, I come to you. You've been playing for multiple 15, 20 years, whatever it is. So you're, you're at 70. All right, let me know when you're at 100. Leave it alone. Yep. You know your body best. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, they try and trust those guys yeah. knowing themselves. They'll talk to the doctors, talk to the training staff. All right, you, all right, well, blah, 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 bang. But Justin, how you feeling? Yep. Good. You need two more, two or three more? Bang, bang, boom. I'll watch it. Let's go to work. If you're 23 and you're pitching and you're, you're going three to that starts rehab in, assignment. Oh, rehab yeah. Rehab assignment. And they're more dictating yeah. the pace of your time exactly. table, right? Exactly. Yeah. Two innings, then four innings, then mm -hmm. five, then 80 pitches, then, you know, whatever, whatever they have to do. Yeah. That's I'm also, more of the, you do sit down as the GM. You're like, yo, you're barely old enough to have a drink. We're going to tell you how your <laughs> rehab's going to go. Okay. How Thank do you. you. Do? I'm also, I'm also like, I need, I need to fight for the minor leaguers here. JV, if you're not going to go down to rehab, 
Let's get a spread sent down there. Let's get the boys something. You know, we need some Ruth Chris when oh, Syracuse Ruth. goes into Indianapolis in a couple of weeks. So True. let's get True. it done. True. That's fair. That's a thing. Just if you're the more casual listener to this show, when you're down making your rehab appearance as a pitcher or a position player, you're, you're hooking your boys up that you're playing with for the day with a serious spread of food, right? Every time. Like if it has there real quick, has there ever been a veteran? Have you ever heard any stories about a guy who's down there in the minor leagues? He's got a, a fat paycheck and he didn't, he didn't buy, oh, I forgot, or, you no. know, oh, I did it yesterday. I'm not going to do it today. No, it's, uh, oh, 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 you've seen it done. I've never you seen got it something? done. Absolutely. The man said, I don't know any of these guys, and most likely none of them are coming to the big leagues. Oh. I'm not buying anything. Oh, boy. The man, I, I, that's nobody's name. I need a name or something. Right? <laughs> I don't know if you're getting I a can't, name. can't do that. I give can't me, do give that. Give me a team or something. Give me a team. It was with the Yankees. Wow. I can't Wait, do it. I, that's uh, fine. I, 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 I just want to make I, sure, though, because we know this is getting clipped for social later. I just wow. want you to go back on the record again. Because, yeah, it's fine. Kratzy's full it, story. He's sweating just right now. Go, no, nope. no, because the guy's name's not coming out. So he's good. But I just want to reiterate. Say, but there I'll, was yeah. a player. That there was, was in the player, minor leagues. Go ahead. You take there was over. a player that rehabbed in the minor leagues, and he was there for multiple days. Oh boy! And the question was asked because we had a good, we had a good team, we had a good team down there, guys that weren't afraid to, you know, call you to the carpet. Hey, when uh, when are we gonna get some spread? Like at least like some Wendy's nuggets or something pregame. And he goes, I don't know any of these guys. And they probably won't make it up to the big leagues anyway. My goodness. Well, we'll we'll leave it at that. I mean, let let's go. Let's jump to the Mets now again. That's so we're bad, just on though. the Yankees. No, I, that, so, that's I can't. I, I can't. I can't only rip on because Aaron Judge came down. Yeah. And I mean, this dude absolutely sushi pregame. Mm, let's go. Post game, dude came in and was grilling up steaks. Oh. And I mean, it was the full steak baked potato and it was like wow like thank you so like that's so awesome next night lo mismo the same thing wow. lo mismo i love it that that's what you do in spanish yeah that's what, you, what do. you do that's it i've done it before i mean it, shoot i mean and when you're at places they don't have like the ruth chris's of the world you find that outback that steak is just as good crazy <laughs> you know what i mean outback's just as good absolutely and it and it, and it changes the one time i went on rehab with the phillies they were like they were pushing this like super health kick, yeah. and at the you know I was eating healthy and I was like, but the guys were grinding. The guys in the minor leagues were grinding, so I was like, we're going ice cream bar and five guys burgers. <laughs> Oof, can't oh, the, love that. The Solid. strength coach was so heated, <laughs> and I was like, look, a break. hey, the boys need a break. Yeah. Get some get some grease in your system. Ice cream bar, absolutely. All right, one more thing I want to hit on before we get to Mark Bowman, who's about to join us. We're really NL East heavy to start the show, but it's a national show. We're all over the place. We just happen to be yes. NL East heavy today. Game of the of the year, I think, so far. The mm -hmm. first week of the season was with Atlanta. But one more thing, because New York's going crazy. Omar Narvaez, Mets catcher, um, he's got a left calf strain. He's on the IL. And here comes top five prospect in the sport, Francisco Alvarez for the Mets. And it's controversial because you just don't know if he's going to stick up here. The problem, it, the bat's amazing. I'm, I'm not, I'm saying long-term he's going to be a big leader. Yeah. I'm saying short-term Mets fans just want him up now for good. He, he's got a lot of work to do still as a catcher. Of course, but eight or nine weeks now. This I, I remember when Mike Trout hurt his calf, yeah. how, how long it took him to get back. Months. Calf, calves are no joke. Okay. Those, you know, excuse me, there goes my cord, but. Knowing, yeah. knowing how calves are, like, it's like a hamstring. But he's got eight or nine weeks to get that thing ready. And this guy, Francisco Alvarez, it's time. This is, this is your time, dude. Like, when you get that chance, go. He had two home runs in four games, batting 250 as a catcher. I'll take 250 all day. Eric, I don't know about you, especially from behind the plate, um, 1.056 uh, OPS. All right, I know it's AAA, but it's go time now, big dog. This is your time to step up and shine and get after it. No, this bat is there. Yeah. I mean, he's got 40-plus power. Mm -hmm. um, not great, I'm saying. Homer. Like, he's capable of 40-plus home runs yeah. in the big leagues. <clears throat> if you hit – he 
it's one of those guys that hits the ball differently. The ball sounds different, different noise. off the bat. Different the noise. exit velo is disgusting. So it's just a matter of position. That's all. That's I it. mean, he, he's got a, a Kratzy, you know, he's playing the toughest position in the sport, still mm-hmm. learning. But guess what? Good news. There's something called a DH these days in the National League. So yes. just ease him in. I don't think I don't think you need to ease him into DH. I think you got you have some veteran pitchers up there that are going to be like, "Hey, I'll help you along with this." I don't think they need to throw him in there five days a week right out of the gate. Thomas Nito, he's going to do you know he's going to do his thing. He's going to get those guys. You know he'll take. If I were if I were Buck, I would tell Francisco, "Look, you're going to play the first two days. Then I'm going to sit you. Then you're going to play three days. Then I'm going to sit you." And then we're going to go from there. We're going to evaluate so that he doesn't feel like, all right, the Mets, you know, they're kind of struggling a little bit. You know, this is this is my chance to shine. And he has to push through the first four games playing. He's getting worn out. And all of a sudden, you know, it doesn't it doesn't go well. But you give him the two, you get Nito back in there. Hopefully Nito's a guy that can really, you know, conversate with them and they can they can learn a lot defensively. Look, behind a dish. You have to at least put out the front that the pitchers are the most important thing. So you hit, you hit a homer, because he's going to hit one or two homers here in the first week or two when he comes up to the big leagues. You hit, you get those homers, then you go back and you sit down next to your pitcher. You don't have to say anything, but they have to have that feeling or else you're just going to be that. Because, I mean, nobody's even seen all the stuff that everyone said. Like, you haven't seen him catch. Like, how did, how did how do you know what kind of what kind of catcher he is if you know you've been pitching in the big leagues for the last 10 years you haven't seen him you just hear what everyone else is saying so he's got to put out that front whether he believes it or he doesn't believe it that he is there for the pitchers and he could be a huge huge pickup for the Mets cuz frankly they need the offense it's going to be a tough tough race for them again in the division. I don't think they're winning. I think the Braves are, which brings us to mlb.com <laughs> Mark Bowman joining us right now. Great follow on Twitter, too. MLB Bowman is the Twitter handle. Mark, great to talk to you. Uh, are you hungover from last night? I mean, that was freaking wild. Game, <laughs> I said game. game of the year so far. I mean, even if you're not a Braves fan, which I'm just watching everything, um, it was the Padres played great, too. It was just an awesome game. How you doing? Super, super game. I mean, you know, you look at it, you, you know, if I'm going to make my world or uh, NLCS prediction right now, it's the Padres and, and Braves, and the two teams played like it last night. It, it's uh, – Strider was phenomenal. I know he, he gave up the homer to Carpenter down in the zone, a pitch down the zone. And then, um, you know, the, the Kirby Yates had a rough eighth inning there. They, they gave up uh, – Padres got the two-run lead, and the, the Braves battled back like they, they have so often. And, you know, we, we look at this Braves lineup and we say it could be the National League's best because of all the power. But look at the, all the two-strike hits last night. Look at the uh, discipline they showed as, when they – uh, Chase Snell there in the fourth inning, and, and just uh, you know, for Rosario to come off the bench, there's there's a lot of guys that can hit 30 homers, but also within this lineup, you know, you got to like the plate discipline, and I, I think this is why this could be one of the uh, best teams the Braves have had, and you know, certainly uh, in recent memory and maybe of all time. Yeah, that's great, man. How, how's everything going with uh, Strider? So we saw him last night. He looked absolutely phenomenal um, for his first two starts. Uh, what's your impressions on him, especially having a, a great year at the end of the year last year and now coming into his own a little bit? It's incredible to think of what, what he did last year with basically one year of professional experience and then to, to throw, uh, you know, make close to, you know, go p- pitch, use, be used as a starter for the final four months of last year and to put up the 200 strikeout season. Um, you saw it last night that the slider was, was just filthy. He, you know, he's, he's spotting 97 on the black. He's also spotting, you know, the, uh, the slider, you know, the, I think they swung, I think the Padres swung at 11 sliders last night and whiffed on eight. And then they, they looked at another eight or nine for called strikes. It, it, it's, we, we talk about that 98, 99, but, but just, a, you know, the, the sliders is just as much a bastard pitch as, as the, uh, as that fastball is. So, um, you know, he is – it's just a lot of fun to watch him pitch every five days. And it's going to be fun to, to see him grow. He, he's he got a little bit of uh, – he's got a much higher pitching IQ than you expect from somebody with this much experience. It's, it's fun to hear him talk. 
mainly because he's able to simplify the, the art of pitching at, at such a, a young age. And uh, it's nice to be able to throw, you know, 100 mile per hour BBs. But at the same time, he he understands where to spot it and how to keep himself ready uh, to prepare every five days. It's it's just, a fun, uh, you know, not only fun to, to watch him pitch every five days, but to see him prepare. Our question of the day, which was kicked around last night on Twitter, is who is the best pitcher in baseball five years from now? And Todd Father went with Otani. Kratz went with Alcantara. And we got to keep in mind age, right? I looked up. Alcantara still only going to be 32. Strider would be 29 at that point. There are other candidates as well. Like I say, Dylan Cease. I think the question also came up because of Grayson Rodriguez of the Orioles making his debut this week. You're biased, but... I yeah. said Spencer Strider. Do you agree with me? I'll be honest. After these first two starts, what I'm seeing, it's it, it, the stuff feels real. The, the the delivery feels real. I remember a couple of years ago, 2016. I think I had covered the uh, uh, whatever whatever year Bumgarner faced uh, Cindergard in that wild card game. So you know, just Cindergard was great that year, and the Braves opened up in New York the next year, and I. I predicted that Cindergar was going to win the Cy Young that, that year and watched him on opening day and he threw, you know, I don't know, a bunch of sliders at 92. And I walked, you know, the subway that, that day and I was like, there's no way this guy wins the Cy Young. He's not going to stay healthy. That's the, that's the difference between with Strider. I, I think that, you know, this guy has power stuff, but the mechanics are so good. I, I think he can stay healthy. So, yeah, I'm, I probably would lean towards him, you know, still being at, uh, at that elite level and maybe being the, the game's best pitcher here five years from now. Why do you feel like – is it because you're drinking the Atlanta juice that uh, you feel like he's going to – like, do you have a crystal ball? Why, why is he going to stay healthy? Is it because he's got big legs and really tight pants? I guess, Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess I'm just looking at those mechanics and saying he could – he's going to stay healthy. But like you, were, like you said, you never know. And that's a hell of a risk they took giving him, the, the you know, the contract they did, um, you know, at the end of last year with without, uh, you know – any anytime you you project a pitcher, you know, uh, five six years from now, you don't know. Uh, you know, I maybe maybe he is injured, but yeah, I, I just think that his his mechanics are simple. Um, we'll see. You know, he's already had Tommy John, um, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, he he could be injured. Well, we never know. And Mark, it seems like the only thing the Braves aren't doing right is the freeze, man. My man, they need to figure something out. I know you're at the games, so and maybe. Maybe start it like one, two, three, go. Like you can't be, you can't be giving some of these guys or find fans that are just not, don't look like they can run. These guys are, are zooming out there. So I, Braves I keep winning and the was, freeze keeps losing. So what's going on here? I thought that guy was fading about center field last night. So okay, he's got him, and the guy just kept going. So you, you have to wonder. I mean, is is the freeze? I mean, is is he getting to that point where maybe they need to get a you know, put some more new water in the, in the freezer and create create a new piece of ice there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but, yeah, that's – you know, I, I'd say he's been beat four or five times here uh, going back to last year's All-Star break. So, uh, that is entertaining to see the – you know, when the fans do win there. But it, it's always been a fun promotion. But it, but you're right. The, the uh, This guy isn't as uh, invincible as, uh, you know, as he seemed to be there at the beginning of the promotion. Mark, go to go to my guy Anthopolis. Like, is he is he a incredible? I wrote it down so I didn't forget. Is he an incredible negotiator? An incredible GM? Or is he just in the right spot with the right owner and you know the whole new stadium and everything? What 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 is he? What is he doing and what is, you know, what are some of his missteps? Because it doesn't seem like he has any missteps. And I love Anthopolis from the times when I was with the Blue Jays. Yeah, well, you know, we just kind of look at I, I do think that there, there there's a a this is a great environment here, you know, with the battery, the stadium, the city of Atlanta. I think if you know players do want to to be here. Uh Snicker is a guy that, that players, I'm sure you guys kind of heard you know, while you were playing and some players maybe talk about him or maybe cross past somebody that, that, uh, you know, knew of this guy who's just a baseball lifer, you know, you, the baseball lifers are rooting for Brian Snicker and, you know, Rob Thompson, these guys that, that truly have lived the life, know the game and, and know how difficult the game is to play. You know, and I think that's the, the big thing is, uh, you know, with the, the, the environment that, 
so that and Anthopolis have been able to create within that clubhouse. Then, like I said, you got the battery and everything. And and yeah, I think Alex, you talk to him. He, he you know, he he has that he has a way with words, and he's able to convince you of, of things that maybe you you go into the conversation. Um, you know, you, whether you're talking about who's going to be the shortstop this year or whatever, you you come away going, okay, I, I get what he's saying. You know, he. He is a, a – I'm, I'm sure he is very good at the negotiating table uh, because he, he does get his point across, and, and he's a good guy. Um, you know, a, this is a – you know, ha, have they hit – have they been very fortunate? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously the Acuna deal looks great. The the Albies deal looks great. I think, you know, Austin Riley, we, we'll see what happens over the 10 years. That one looks good. Michael Harris, that looks good. Strider, we'll see. You know, if you, you're asking for one misstep – it would be exactly that deal that he waited and really didn't want to do until February of what was that 2021 when he went ahead and re-signed Azuna. You, you know, you look at when that deal was made, you can tell that he was sitting there going, I know we need a power hitter. I don't want to double down on Marcel's short 2020 season. You know, you don't want to, you know, yeah, he was good over 60 games. Can he do it again? He didn't want to sign that deal. You could feel it. And, you know, if, if that was, that, that certainly is his misstep right now. So everyone has one. They're able to, you know, you know maybe maybe Yozuna does just enough, you know, to, you know, warrant keeping him this year. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if, if you know, they give him some playing time here these first six weeks. And if he doesn't uh, perform, they'll eat that contract. He's got about $37 million left right now. I know you brought up Michael Harris. Um, awkward slide, lower back problem. Um, as for Braves fans out there, are we looking for you know a lot more time? Maybe an injured injured list there. I, I I'm not sure. I don't think so. You know, there was a, the last week of spring training. He missed a, a game with a sore back. Came back, played the next day. Uh, the other night, or the let's see Wednesday afternoon in, in St. Louis, he banged against the wall going back for a, a Goldschmidt fly ball there, home run. Um, but he banged against the wall there and. Um, and then that, that slide last night, I think he tweaked it. I, I'd say this. If it's cold and rainy here tonight, I wouldn't be surprised to see him sitting in it. It's cold and rainy again tomorrow, uh, maybe maybe two days. But uh, I, I don't see it being more than that. I know I know you're a big Braves fan. This is a real quick one here, and then I'll get to my question. But it looks like a Pirates – Looks like a pirate's art thing behind you there. Like, is that, <laughs> no, a, it's is not. that an abstract pirate art, or is that construction? Uh, it's – I was downstairs in the glare. The lights weren't good. That were, you know, all my uh, Penguins, Steelers, and uh, Pirates stuff is because I am actually from up in that neck of the woods, Wheeling, West Virginia. But no, this oh, is yeah. this is just my wife's piece of art here. I, I don't. I couldn't tell you what it is. Okay, no, my <laughs> no, question. I don't know about art. <laughs> that's that's fine. Hey, you look you you look great with it. The hair matches the art and everything. I'm <laughs> I'm digging it, especially since you're a pirate guy. You're you're a Pittsburgh guy, look, but I won't tell anybody 19, else. 1992, I was at the University of Dayton watching Game Seven, and I, it was probably the worst moment of my life. So I yes, I have covered the Braves for uh, you know whatever this is, 23 years now, and I constantly have to see highlights of the night that hit Sid slid. So that's my. That's my uh, life uh, sentence right there. That's your that's your life burden. I get that. Yeah. Let's go on to somebody that I absolutely love, and that's the little O playing shortstop right now, Orlando Arcia. The I mean, just he's never upset. He he wants to catch every fly ball, every pop up that's out there, and he's filled with so much energy. I was so happy when he got back to the big leagues. Now he's a starting shortstop for the Braves. What what is it? What is it that you're hearing or seeing from him as a Brave? And and now you know he's been the spark plug. I mean, he was the hero last night. Yeah, no, it's it's a great story. I loved what Matt Olson said last night. It's he said it's hard not to root for this guy. You know what he went through the last couple of years, where you know he, he uh, you know kind of the Brewers pushed him aside, moved him to third and trade him and, and it comes to Atlanta and has to fill a backup role. Here's a guy that just a couple years ago, he was, you know, top 10 prospect. Talk to, I think it was 2016. Uh, you know, he he's always been able to play defense. Uh, we haven't seen him as an everyday player here a lot. We saw it a little bit last year when Ozzie Albies got hurt and he played second base. And there were times where you, 
you wondered if the scouts and evaluators were were right in saying he's better off, you know, being a role player, you know, playing, but, you know, can he handle the start, you know, an everyday role for two weeks at a time, three weeks at a time, sure. But then he, he gets into these laws. Um, right now, I, you know, there's not anything wrong. You know, he is their best defense. He was their best defensive option for sure heading into camp. I really never bought into the whole Von Grissom going to be the shortstop thing. He, he doesn't have the range to play the position. He came all the way from a ball to the big leagues and had a, couple good weeks last year and, and then but I, I really thought that he needed to develop you know not only defensively and I don't even know if he ever can you know get to that point where you're comfortable with him from a defensive standpoint as an everyday shortstop and then the other guy was Braden Shoemake who has never really hit at the big league or at the minor league level and you wanted to go ahead and you definitely need he definitely needs at least another month or two of bats at, at AAA level so you always knew that Arcia was the the safest bet or, you know, you, he could do the job. He, he's the guy who could get you through a month and may, maybe shoe make and uh, develops the bat enough that, that he becomes the everyday guy. But right now you got to love what Orlando's doing because he's, he's showing why just six, seven years ago, he was such a highly touted prospect. You, you saw what he did in, in Milwaukee in 2018 postseason. had a bunch of big home runs up there. Um, He's taking advantage of the moment right now, and you you, you love stories like that. And you it, you know I, I think you probably you guys may have crossed paths with him, and it, you know he's just a fun loving guy. It, it's 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 cool to see guys that have that much fun uh, with the game have success like this. Mark, I've got one for you about the business of baseball. So the Braves have an awesome ballpark. They've built the whole basically town around their ballpark. Games are going to be shorter now, okay? So if it's, say, a two-hour, 20-minute game because you got Strider going up against Scherzer or something like that, this team's going to be even richer. I mean, they might spend even more. Think about it, right? Like, you're getting the gate. You're getting the people in there. Maybe they come early. But then even more incentive if the game's done at, like, 9, 10, some people are out with their buddies. They go, they go hit the bars or the restaurants. So do they have, like, the best setup in baseball to thrive profit-wise as an organization? I think so. I, you know, it's, it's the blueprint for that. Everyone else, you know, wants to, to create. We went outside of uh, DC here this past weekend and you saw how that's all built up around there. And that's nice that they have all the restaurants and they have condos and they have the bars, but you know what? They don't own that, those restaurants and those bars. The Braves own all this property here, the, the battery. And it's uh, yeah, it's a cash cow. It, It is, you're, you're going to see, you know, St. Louis has the area out there and, left center field, uh, you know, whatever they call that out there. And you can see other teams try to, to duplicate this. But uh, for the Braves to have the hotels, the restaurants, the bars, the guys when they were, you know, a lot of them stayed there uh, in the condos and apartments around there during the 2020 season. And they, they played in front of an empty stadium and they walked back to, to their houses, you know, from the stadium. The bars and the restaurants are packed and they're sitting there going, yeah. Just outside here, you got all these these fans that are sitting here watching our games out here at the bars, and uh, you know, um, you know, we we played in front of an empty stadium. But what I'm saying that is, even 2020, when you know the world was shut down, that the battery still thrived, and, and the Braves uh, made a lot of money there, and they, they will continue to do so. I I don't know if any of you were there for the World Series in 2021, but that place was an absolute zoo. I will remember walking out, out there in right center field and looking out, and I, you couldn't see cement. I mean, you couldn't. There was that many people just out there eating, drinking, and having fun. Lastly, on having fun for me, I saw a big ass hat in the dugout yesterday. <laughs> I, I it was like one of the times that I ran to the bathroom and I came back. And Kelly Crawl, who does a great job on the broadcast, was like starting to explain it, but I missed some of it. I was on the app, so I can't rewind, which is another issue. But um, I heard a fan might have given it to someone, and now is this going to be the new celebration? And, and that's from what? Brian Robinson's company, the, the Redskins uh, – or not the Redskins, what are they now? The Commanders running back? Yeah, I, I think so. I need to get a look. I, last night was the first time I'd seen it. You know, the first – I think it's just something that, that popped up here at home. So I need to learn a little bit more about it here when I get to the clubhouse today. And also, the other thing I, I, I'm getting questions about is this little – Maybe I'm getting old, but the the, the, the two small, you know, their their uh, gestures that these guys are doing. I need to catch up on that one too. So uh, <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 <laughs> it's, it's all fun and, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, you know, the whole stir it up and that stuff that's easy. And now I get now I got to feel 
figure out what this hat is and what too small is. And, you know, I guess I'm just getting old. Last thing I got for you. I'm going to, I'm going to mimic an announcer from the Braves. I want you to tell me who it was. Okay. All right. Can we do that? This quick little game with you real quick. So now batting for your Braves, Chipper Jones. (laughs) Good old skip. (laughs) Ah, there we go. All right. We were trying to figure out who it was because uh, I, I used carry. to, yes, I used to get him down all the time, you know, with that, <laughs> that little like Kermit the Frog kind of voice he had there a little bit. So I'm glad you helped me out with that one. I appreciate it. Hey, <laughs> you, you grew up watching TBS, right? Yes, I did. Yes. Yes. Of yeah. Course. Skip, Skip was the best. It's, uh, you know, it's cool to, you know, I was glad to be able to re- be around him every first seven or eight yeah. years doing this job. And then he had Chip. Chip was yeah, a great broadcaster yeah, yeah. this past season. I love his his energy. is unbelievable. Yeah. Every every time they hit a home run, everybody like he gets into it. I love that. You stuff. know he moved though. He's caught. He's with now. the car. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, a, that's, that's been a, some. That's a shame. Bro. There's been some I don't transactions know the whole story. moving around. I don't know the story, but I, 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 I that, that's. I don't like know a the story. Affair. I have a theory, but I'm, <laughs> <laughs> another day, <laughs> another day. Uh, yeah, and it's nothing against Chip. It's yeah. it's, it's a it's a positive story for him. Anyway. Not going to get anyone in trouble for the, we do yeah. every day. So for the last 10 seconds here, Mark, it was awesome having you on. This was great. Really appreciate the time. I mean, you and me used to talk all the time on the rundown on MLB network. So it's got that feel to it. We appreciate it. Appreciate you, man. All right, guys. It was fun. You. Let me know when you can do it again. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. That was awesome. Yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah. He's... Shooting the shit with all the writers too. Yeah. I used to do that all the time. And then now I can do it in a different way, which is fun. He's passionate about those. Oh, yeah. you, can, you can tell he, he will talk all day, man. Yeah. You get him going. He's I great. Love it. He's great. Yes, he is. All right. The ready more, to make some money. The more, the more he talked about the Braves too, the more his Southern accent kept coming out. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hey, he's, he's, he's like, like you know, now, you know, man, down, down when he was talking about the pirates, he's like, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, pirates and Steelers, those were some bad days. He's like, then he started talking about, well, down in the battery, man, down in Atlanta. I love that. I love hey. it. I, I'm all for the, the people who are around the team so much and knowing so much about the team, like loving their team. I'm, I'm for that. Hey, he dropped a, he dropped, I haven't heard this one in a while, but they were hitting BBs he dropped. You know, he yeah, wasn't, I've, I've heard of like hitting nukes, hitting bombs. He dropped, hey, when they're hitting BBs, and I'm like, oh, man. I said, dude, this guy, this is real deal right here. Because I, lo- I love those old slang and terms they use. But hitting BBs, hey, that's that's real deal. That's yeah. that's 23 years in the biz over there. Yeah, that's better than exit velocity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, what's for your, sure. What's your BB, BB velocity? <laughs> love it. Absolutely love that. What's your BB speed? Oh, but I, I do want to clear one thing up, though, because you guys, Kratzy's getting some of the uh, virus, too, from, from AJ. They're not fans of the teams. They're, they're not fans. They're fans of the, the experience. I didn't, say, I didn't say he loves the Braves. I said he loves Atlanta. Like, yeah, he okay, loves fair, the fair. city that he's in. And I think that's – because I think sometimes, sometimes local writers can be, like, kind of snarky. And yes. as, like, a, a, as a fan of your team – it's hard to accept an outsider. And so if you're, if you're not from Atlanta and you're an Atlanta local writer, like he is like, I feel like he, he, I felt like my feel was he gets Atlanta, whether he's, you know, whether he's a Braves fan or not, he gets Atlanta and he gets what those fans really are doing. I mean, it's easy because they're all coming out to the, they're all coming out to the stadium in the battery, like he talked about, but, yeah, I love I, – I think, I think he's for the city, which is, you know, how you draw a sports team together. The city comes together. And, and it's funny you bring it up. Like, for me, I, I learned the hard truth and when I was playing with the Mets, and I'd had a problem with a couple of the beat writers or whatever it is, and I'm like, you guys are Mets fans. Like, what's your problem? What? They're like, oh, hold on. Are you a Mets fan? Are you a-? None of them are Mets. I'm like, oh, damn, so you're looking for that shit. You're looking for the spiciness. I said, I got you now. I said – that's on me. I said, come talk to me again. We'll get, we'll get in depth. You know, I was being a wise ass. Yeah. I said, now that I know, okay, cool. That's my thing. I, I, I didn't know that. And now that, that's on me to, to fully understand. But here's my thing. This is, I didn't realize this was such a, such a to-do. Many players yeah. think that the writers are fans of the team. Yeah. You wipe that shit away when yeah. you start working. I didn't, because I didn't, otherwise you're going to have bias. Well, I, I grew up with some Mets in me, but I don't give a but shit if, in a positive way. If, like, I'm rooting for the sport, the stories, the whole thing. I'm a that. national broadcaster. If I'm an announcer, though, I got to be a home. I, I, well, the I, local announcers local. are absolute homers. Okay. Not yeah, all of them, but yeah. most of them. But, you know? yes, but you, that, that's a big thing. Like, 
They work for the team, though, the, the yeah. local announcers, <laughs> essentially, course. even so, if it's like one step removed. They work course. for the, the team's yeah, hire them. Okay, course, I can tell course. you. I've been All through right. a million interviews for that stuff. Boom. But the you got to but, but you got to you got to be for your city. Like you can't you can't you can't be a writer who's kind of snarky about your city because you're, you're writing to the fan base. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. you got to love the city. That's fair. Yeah. But it, but you don't have to be they don't have to rah rah the team. That's all. The, nope. the broadcasters do. I can tell you I've sat in. there was one interview I sat in and a team uh, was terrible and they knew they were going to be terrible for a while. And they were like, so they basically said, so when we're terrible, how are you going to talk about it? Like, <laughs> what's your PR spin? For there us? we go. Was like, of course, uh, it's like gross. But so anyway, <laughs> I'm not there. <laughs> oh, all good. Ready to make some money? Money, money, money. Let's make some damn money, baby. Money. Our Friday locks coming up. Presented by BetMGM. First off, let's time. recap. Let me, this guy is in fuego, Yo, Scotty. don't touch me because I don't want boy. you to get burnt. It's not That's that hot out six in yet. a row, kid. I'm, I'm going to jinx it right now. That's six. I don't know about lucky seven. We'll see. All right, so AJ got screwed because he, he had the Braves <clears> one and a half run line, but uh, the Braves won by a run. I felt bad for him because mm, he's, he's uh, hurting right now. I know you don't. No. That's your rival. Eric Kratz. A rare miss, Ooh, but it was only a hundo. One so nothing, good. one nothing in the Rocky Mountains. Come on, <laughs> I, he almost went on the over under, and he decided not to touch it. Good Yee. thing because it was under by a billion. By all of it, it was under by yeah. the whole game. Like exactly, the whole one game nothing in Colorado with with shitty teams. That those kind of games have twelve ten written all over them. So it's okay, you out. don't win them all. It's a no, it's exactly. a marathon, not a well, sprint. You're me. Well, knock on wood. But yo, know, Padres and Braves. Uh, I went with the with the over eight, and I felt great because halfway through the game, there was already eight runs up, and sure. obviously the game's not going to end in a tie. So Solid. I was chilling. Solid. It was a stress free dub, just rack up another. Make sure, make sure one put another bet in. Isn't that how they get I you? did. So yeah, it's, I it's, did. It's, did I was all one? over the night game. No, I went <laughs> one. I went even on the night game. I went under on the score for yeah. Dodgers and and D backs. I took D backs money line on on plus money and lost that. So, but I was even on that. And you and our text group Can, said, I was going to bring that up. What Can, did you say? Say it now. Because once listen, we do our picks, it's tighter. Listen, I, I'm going to have to send a picture to our producer so we can get this up. I said, Dodgers, we're going to win five to two. And Eric, Scotty, and whoever else on that text said, it came out five to damn two. I've never done that before in my life. And guess what? If you know you have those games like, oh, predict the score. You know how much money I would have won yesterday? Just putting a hundred dollars. If you on. put five two on a score for a game like yeah. that, the the odds, my guess would be, are probably a thousand. It's probably plus what? five thousand. I would say think four thousand. So? I, I mean, to predict the exact score, yeah, who's the fair. winner? And the, I predicted the exact score. I I, <laughs> I remember the. You might have to try it tonight. I, just, to, the, just, just to do just a heat to see, check. Just to just see. Throw like you know fifty bucks or yeah. something on it. No, I'm not doing one nothing in Colorado though. But yeah, hell no. I'll take that. That was probably plus a billion. Ooh. That never happens, especially Ooh. two shitty teams. That was All right, great. money bags, please. And then we'll get to our picks. How are we doing here? Let's see what we got today. So I'll read it, too, for the podcast audience as we're getting it together. Uh, oh, AJ is one and four. He's down 470. Todd Father's up 150 on a two and one uh, after your dub two days ago. Kratz, he's still cruising up 422 and 50 cents <laughs> at four and two, and I'm, I'm six and oh. When am I going viral if I get to 10 and 0? 10. 10 and 0 on, 10. on bets? Because this is the first time I'm ever allowed to bet on baseball and talk about it because I worked for the league forever. So yeah, it's like 10. 10? Okay. So I got work to do. I've been Love nervous it. about it. So I'm up 615. I'm still going to go last on this. And now your MGM, bet MGM locks of the day for Friday. Let's start with the great Eric Kratz. Kratzy, take it away. What are you doing today? I got Atlanta minus one and a half. I got them winning this game by three or more, so this is gonna be this is gonna be an easy one for me. But I got a plus one fifty to beat the Padres. I feel like there could be a lot of runs scored in this game. I really like some of the early games because now we're at one fifty nine, so I can't even can't even really talk about some of the early games. I liked them, but this one I like the. I like the Braves. I think they really enticed me with the plus 150, too. So I put 200 down for the plus 150 Ooh, to get myself to 300. Going big. Okay. So 200 <laughs> down. Yeah. You'd be you'd be taking 300 home. Frazier, you're up. I'm going over under on the Cardinals-Milwaukee game. We got Jack Flaherty on the mound against Brandon Woodruff. I think it's going to be low scoring. I think both of them are going to go in the sixth inning at least. 
could be like a two-one matchup there, and then wow. a couple runs going back. I'm going with the under on this game. It's eight and a half. So you're going eight under and eight and a half. I'm going under eight and a half. I'm going to put. I'm going to – Minus 110. Yeah, I feel good. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go 330 to win three today. Woo! I'm going, up, I'm going up. I'm feeling pretty froggy about Ooh, this one. baby. Okay. It's Friday. It's Friday, baby. I'm going to get you high. I, I stay consistent. You, that's, I've got that's your – Of course. Stay consistent. I've got – this is what gets interesting. I, I've got a, a plus money game, okay? Because it's not like I'm just picking on – you know, my record, it's not just the record. That's why we show the money. So I'm 6-0, and but I'm going to plus 105 spot. I'm going straight up against Kratzy tonight. Ooh. I got the Padres bouncing back money line. It's plus 105, 100 down to win 105. I love Nick Martinez. I think he's got great stuff. I think the Padres need a dub too. And, you know, you get that high from the win on the walk-off on yeah. the opening night at home. So so what's going to happen is they're – Padres are going to lose by one, and both these are going to lose. Yeah, both <laughs> <of these teams. laughs> Very possible. Uh, hey, hey, listen. There's some, been some crazier shit. I think it's going to be a close game tonight. And yeah. the Padres offense, I mean, I watched that game front to back. It yeah. looked good. I, I think – I just think they're going to have a great year offensively. The Braves are great too. Mm-hmm. But Jared Schuster, rookie, looked okay first time around. I think the yeah. Padres are going to teach him a little lesson. Yeah, and I think about, Michael yeah, Harris the second's not playing tonight. So, That's I think that, that dings them a little too. So, I've got a bounce back dub. Kratzy and me are going to be talking shit all night watching the game. Ooh, so, here we go. Stay tuned, please. Love it. Okay. And for existing BetMGM sports users, here's how to get this next offer. It's Nerfy Fridays, baby. Okay. okay. We're going to be participating quite a bit too. We're going to do some Twitter spaces like live for Nerfy Fridays coming up down the road. So you opt into the promotion on the app, place a no run first inning bet on any MLB game. So bet no on the will there be a run in the first inning market. That's nerfy for you if you're new. Mm-hmm. If your bet loses but only one run is scored during the first inning, you receive a bonus bet back equaling your stake. So you get your money back 20, uh, up to 25 bucks. Bonus bet will be reflected once the wager is settled. It's available only on Fridays. That's why it's called Nerfy Fridays. Okay. Please make sure to read the full terms and conditions of this promotion before participating. Always bet responsibly. Gambling problem or concern? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Boom. By the way, coming up next in about 15 minutes, Tommy Canely. Did you play with him? Yeah, Tom. I played with him uh, in with the White Sox and with the Yankees. Oh, twice. What a beauty. He's just a I heard he, a I beauty. haven't interviewed him before, but I heard he is a gem. Oh, he's a gem. You'd love him. Oh, man. The bus rides. I mean, everything about the dude. He is going to make you laugh from ear to ear, and there's this is going to be a good one. I can't wait to talk to him. Yeah, we're going to run through some baseball cards, too. We've got uh, FT Replay Review. That's what we're calling it coming your way next. So you're going to look back at something from the week and, and, and rack it back and give yeah. me a little replay analysis of it. Um, so, Kratzy, you're up first. What am I up first on? Replay Review. About what? I can't see nothing. No, you. When we were in the meeting here, you know, we, we're going to talk through things live here. When we were in the meeting, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Our, group, my, said, my replay. We said, "Hey, Kratzy, what was <laughs> yeah. your favorite moment?" I wasn't allowed to. We, I we wasn't, changed I the wasn't name. Able to, yeah, 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 yeah. I had. I have to. I have to feed it up for Claudia to put it on. Yeah, my they bad. can put it on for you. So yeah. you want them to show it, and then you'll talk about it. Uh yes, because I think the. I think the. I think the audio will let you know what happened but we had Yarborough on and I was talking to him about when we played against him in the 2020 COVID season playoffs yes anymore I'll let you know okay he could <laughs> see a tip and that's why he absolutely racked you to left field okay. all the time <laughs> <laughs> this guy I was like oh man are you kidding me that's that's actually kind of funny but I'm gonna have to go back and look at this now my gosh oh man it was it was like it was I remember I remember he got put in the lineup and he's like, Yeah, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna <laughs> wreck this guy. And nobody else could see the tip. I don't know if it was from the left side that you could see it better. And he goes, Oh, we're gonna kill him. We're gonna kill him. I think we had three hits and he had all three of them. It was Yeah, probably for a homer too. Like I think uh, I threw a CD against them one year and I think he had a homer off me yeah. that game. <laughs> and I'm like, this guy, like I normally handle my lefties really well I'm like this guy just somehow all the time like just laying off these sliders don't get it it's all making yep. sense to come together <laughs> i like the whole i like the like what i loved about that was the emotion of him finding out and then it gave him about uh, 20 to 30 seconds for it to like settle in and he's like it all makes sense now so he was like he was pissed that there was a tip 
But then he's like, okay, it's fine. Like he, he had the time to process Guardy's out of the league. You know, now it makes sense. And now like it almost, it built him up a little bit. Like, okay, I am still good. Even though he, he kind of owned me in my career. I'm, I'm good. He was kind of cheating. Hey. That's right. That's fair cheating. You're allowed. Right? Oh, for sure. Real quick explanation, Kratzy, of a, uh, of, of what tipping's all about for an audience that might not know about it and how big it is in the sport. I mean, you got guys like almost like a full-time job working on it, right? Yes. Tipping is huge. And it is something that anytime you can get an advantage from a pitcher who is unbeknownst to him telling you what pitch is coming from anything from a tilt of the glove to I've seen it where you know, a guy comes set and the height of his glove is different to how many times his foot taps on the ground to we played one guy every time he got a, he would throw a change up. He would hold his change up and put it in his glove. So he never had to move. He wouldn't open his mouth, but every time he would hold the change up and put it in when he put his hand in, in his glove from the stretch, he would open his mouth to change the pitches. So you knew it wasn't a changeup. It was like, oh my goodness. And some guys, some guys, this is crazy. They're like, I, I don't want to know what's coming because they would just swing no matter what. They're like, oh, I know a changeup's coming here. And they would just flail at it no matter where it is. And you'd look stupid. But most guys, after you practice it a little bit, it becomes a ridiculous advantage. It sure does. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to hit the ball hard. That's Have you had one before yeah. where oh my God. seems like you've had some? Yeah. And I, I said like, it, hey, I, we got this guy. I said it before. I, I told Chili Davis, you, you give me 60% of what's coming. If you know 60%, I'll take it because it's too damn hard. Yep. Listen, I, he got 40% wrong, but that one time, all right, I got it. Like, yeah. And if I strike out, like that's the thing. If you know that, if yeah. you strike out, you can't be mad because mm -hmm. you got to be 100% in or 100% out, whether, you know, you believe it or not. But yes, you could have enough production in one game if you've got a guy's yeah. tip, right, to oh cover a week. It's yeah, you, you're oh. feeling good that week. You're feeling really good. <laughs> and they always gave the tips. They always gave the tips to the starters. It always seemed like on the days when the backup guys were playing, it's like, yeah. nah, we don't got yeah. anything on this guy. And I'm like, man, one time. And I remember we had a tip on a guy, and I got out there, and I was like, yes, this is going <laughs> to be unbelievable. Oh, for three. Two rockets oh. and a punch out on a ball that was probably three feet out of the zone because oh, I knew yeah. a slider was coming. I'm like, this is it. It's gonna be a hanging slider. Oh, it was hanging. It was hanging well out of well out of the strike zone in a left-handed batter's box. <laughs> Too funny, man. Too funny. <laughs> You're up. All right. My my FP replay, replay review. review was talking with Max Muncie about the guy that proposed on the field, jumped on the field during the game. He proposed and absolutely got depleted. Um, it was a sight to see. If, if you guys haven't seen this yet, this is absolutely phenomenal. Got on one knee, proposed, and here comes the security guy. <laughs> Whoa, got taken out. But the thing was, he held on to that ring. He so did. He, he didn't went, fumble. He did not fumble and that ring. And he had a breakdown. Let's run it. Hey, let me ask you about the dude <laughs> that got absolutely dismantled on, on, the on the proposal he tried doing. I mean... Listen, <laughs> I mean, he got up there. This guy came out of nowhere, dude. They don't mess around with security at Dodger Stadium. That's, uh, That's awesome. you know, unfortunately, we we have a situation like that happen probably once a homestand. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that, the, the security team there, they get it taken care of very fast normally. Um, unfortunately, that guy just kind of put himself in a position to, uh, uh, you know, get, get hit sticked right there. And uh, I think um, – the, the overhead video where you see uh, Lourdes Gurriel kind of celebrating that proposing and then all of a sudden he puts his hands over his head. I think that's probably yeah. the perfect reaction that everyone had. It was kind of like, hey, this is awesome. This guy's proposing. And then, oh, my gosh. If you go on that field there, you will get hogtied and carried out of the stadium. It's pretty <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> the verbiage used there. So I heard dismantled, hit stick, Ooh. hogtied. And that's an A-plus breakdown by, by you and Muncy. We'll there. take it. Hogtied? We'll take hey, it. Listen, it's not, my, not part of my verbiage, but I, I knew what he meant. So all good. That's good. I like it. All right, I'm up. Yeah, how about you? So this was fresh from Thursday, end of the show. 
AJ's on. I hadn't seen this clip before. Have you seen this? Did you catch the end of Thursday? If you didn't, you're going to like it. I, I can't, no, I did not see it. Oh, you're going to love this because yeah. AJ's your boy. Ready? So AJ <laughs> got hit by a pitch back in the day. Oh, but, okay. I saw it. But I, did he get hit by a pitch? <laughs> yes, technically. But should he have been hit by that pitch? He hit a little saucer? Or what? Yeah. O2 Here pitch. You go. Did that he lean hit into him. this pitch? Back to back <laughs> hit batsman. And that forces in a run. We're going to get an argument. Steve Reed's saying Brzezinski did nothing to get out of the way. <laughs> oh, Steve Clint, Reed look at Clint Hurdle. Just got out of the game. <laughs> Clint Hurdle trying to Ooh, there's, there's contact keep Reed away from the umpire. <laughs> They're showing us the replay I'm right now. Without oh, forcing. AJ. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. It's so bad on the replay. The best what are you story. talking about? I totally tried to get out of the way. I mean, that was an easy RBI. The best Wait. part is it was a 9-2 nine, nine to two ball game. RBI, though. R we, got R in the a... we got ice. I love we it. got I ice. Love it. Wow, man. I mean, and he put, you saw after he did it. It's he like a his, swim move. Yeah, and he put his head down like, man, I just made the biggest mistake of my life. That was, <laughs> that was cheap, man. Cheap AJ, of course. Have you ever leaned into a pitch? To get no, because no, they square me up every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jumping out of, I'm not one but of those that guys. That guy wasn't I'm trying not, to hit him. I know. Well, AJ is, of course, trying to get a cheap one. If I was Reed, I'd be yelling at AJ, not the umpire. Right, I agree. He put his head down, man. Come on, put your head up and look at him. Ha <laughs> ha, give him a laugh. That was, that was, that wasn't right. <laughs> it was hilarious. No, though. I think I think Eric's getting thrown out of that game too. If you're the catcher, let's go, dude. Oh, absolutely, man! That ball was coming back. That dude was. I was. I was all over AJ for it. Like, dude, a sinking, a sinking right-handed, like a whatever he was, submarine, not even submarine, sidearm righty in there, nine-two in Colorado. That ball should have been put in the bleachers. Crazy man, go! Hey, he got him first, though. God bless. <laughs> he said RBI that. too. Oh, what? I didn't even hear that. He got it the was O two and oh. an RBI. Crazy. Well, wow. and it was a nine two game, so it's not <laughs> even like a big moment. Because the thing I was excited, and now I think we're gonna have him early next week. So Aladnis Diaz is gonna come on, I think, next week. And do you remember in the World Series this year? He was like, he was lost at, at one point. Him and Mancini were struggling, and he tried to kind of lean it. I think he he tried to lean into one. I think he got hit. And then the ump called it off because he's like, dude, you're, you're leaning in. Do you, do you, is that when, ringing a bell when, for anyone? Well, Maldi well, it kind of happened right around the same time Maldonado did that one when Wheeler was – remember Maldonado? Well, that's his thing. He's done it for two years in a row now. Maldonado will pick a time in the World Series where he basically just stands right on top of home plate and says, your move because I can't, I can't hit your stuff. I'm not going to get a hit. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and to go back to AJ, you're in Colorado, dude. You're trying to go big five. You're up there. I'm like, come on, dude. Smart. Weak, smart, weak smart sauce, baseball. AJ. Weak sauce. Yeah, but it was hilarious. It is funny. Yeah. The, the time, because also, I mean, it's not a big game, right? I mean, it's no. a game that's basically decided already. So, yeah. And I'm going to guess that the Rockies weren't good that year because there's only been a few years, unfortunately, that they have been good. <laughs> but that's good. All right. Good stuff. That's a FT replay review. We'll try and do it each week. Uh, Canley's joining us in about 10 minutes. What we will do here is let's rip through some packs. All oh, right? yeah. We got, yeah. We got, we got, we got, got packs right for here. us. Yes, we Frish. do. All right, let's do it. And we'll give you the play-by-play -play today. It's crafty, okay? Okay. I, I was – I mean, I enjoyed it. I've told so many people about opening those packs. Yeah. It's exciting. We'll do, we'll do four today. Especially how that'll time. be perfect timing. You want to go first? Two each? Yeah, I'll yeah. start. Let's start yeah. it up. I like, your, the I like your board back. there too, guys. The board that, that Jess put oh, up. Oh, yeah, you your... know, we've gotten a few yes, comments. Uh, let me see here. Legit. A few people saying, desk upgrade – uh, there was one other. Where is it? Love the desk. Yeah. Um, props to Jesse. Look at this thing. Very good. That's it, nice. It's going to be, it looks it's like it might up be the whole filled. place. Yeah, I think so. It looks great. I love it. So yeah, you go first. All right. Bro. Let's see. Just Commons, Brady Singer, Seth Lugo, Jesus Sanchez, DeGrom on the Mets, which is always weird. That part's always weird to me. Yeah. Like, I got the grandma on, on the Mets. He's on the Rangers yeah, now. Yeah, that's like it's, crazy. We, and it's, he, it he signed right. a while ago. I got Bieber. These are all commons. Sandoval. I He's got pitching tonight. Sandoval is? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I like his stuff a lot. I do, too. Patrick Sandoval. I do, too. Uh, He's nasty to lefties. He is. Tommy Pham, but from the Red Sox. Christian Javier. I got Dean Kramer. Julio Rodriguez, but... Oh, uh oh wait, hold up. Talk to me. Julio That's one Rodriguez. Of the, one of the hot cards going out. Yeah, but it's not a rook. No. It's the 
tops all star. This is 2023, so it can't be as rookie. No, right. it's not as rookie. Still a nice card, though. Yeah, it says all star rookie show. on the. Yeah, yeah. all star's first rookie. Uh, yeah. All star uh, appearance. Yeah, we get that one highlighted. All right, there. I got. <laughs> Evan Lee. That's not bad. Oh, beautiful. That looks good there. I right, like so those. Iglesias. Oh, and here's one. Here's here's the one I got. So they, they've been doing this where it's it's 35th anniversary tops. It's Jackie Robinson. Wow. But do these – I mean, obviously, it's awesome to have a Jackie card. Do these have value? I'm not sure. I don't think I'm they sure. do. Yeah. But um, Jackie Robinson then coming up soon. Yeah. Next week, we're going to do a special. We can post next that Friday too as well. So for me, Robbie Ray, Michael Massey, Zach Davies, Hai Sung Kim, Graham Ashcraft rookie card. Watch oh, out for this guy. Let's go. This guy's a That's stud. my guy. This guy's a stud. Did you watch him? Did you We're hear about his start the other day or see any of it? He did pretty well. He's in spring training. He he barely yeah. struck anyone out last year. In yeah. spring training, he was striking out the world. So he's got it. I mean, he throw. He's he's got like class A cutter, you know. Yeah, he does. He's he's gonna be good. They've been talking about him in Cincinnati when I was there. Yeah, I'm a fan. All right, that's why I picked them over uh, all over win total. All comments. All comments. We got all two. Right. You got another rip yeah, to do, yeah, right? So. All right, let me do another for you. We are, have we gotten the autograph card out of this top series? Um, not yet. I don't no, think we I don't have. Think we have no. So all right, we got a Burns common Corbin Liberator. Tyler Wells. Do they still do the things with the common cards where it's like a common card is worth seven cents to complete your set kind yeah, of thing? Or I don't think remember they when they used to do that in the. It, uh, it's not about sets anymore, man. It's about those things. Wait, I, Just I a got questions card. here. Are we sure? So, so I've got you know Stroman, Cortez, Cade Cavalli, which actually should be a rookie card because he. Is this his first year? Twenty three. So last year. Well, he, he pitched. He made one appearance last year. I've got a Pujols card. Nice. But Pujols, he still gets put in packs. I like think that. it's from last year. These are from 2022 coming into the 2022. Oh, season. I got you. Okay. Tanner Scott. I've got Marcus Wilson. Some Red Sox thing. I've got the three pack here, which, I, I mean, it's still treated, I think, as a common. It's got yeah. Verlander, Cease, and Manoa on it. But it's, Is it numbered or no? No number? Uh, no. Not, not it's a series much. one. It's not numbered. And then we'll the one I got, the Greatest Hits. Freddie Freeman. I mean, it's pretty. I don't know if it's worth. I mean, that's worth much. Well, we'll show it. It's nice yeah. and shiny there. Put them right show there. it off. All right, you're gonna make us some money here, Freddie. I'm gonna try here. We got Kendall Graveman, J.J. Blade, Corey Seager, Common, Tristan McKenzie, Jordan Romano. Let's see here. Mookie Betts, just a Common. J.J. J.T. Romuto, Zach Thompson, Chris Bryant. I got a Salvi Perez. Yeah, we still got that one. We we nothing, nothing, nothing. We still the Oscar Hernandez. So we got some comments for the board here. So we're gonna get Jesse on this afterwards. Uh, we still have a bunch to go. Let's hey boy, take Jess. a quick peek again. Yeah, we got a bunch. How about we do one more? One more? Yeah, I let's can, do, I one can do one more. more I'm, ex you. I'm excited about it. one more each. How All right. That? Yeah. Uh -oh. oh no, there they go. See uh -oh. you. Hey, See you, hey, nice Jesse. birds. Jesse, that means we're gonna we get some you. fire here. We need you. That means we're gonna get some fire. All right. It's good luck. We just got rid of all, all the good ones. Took a hit. That's yeah, all right. Don't you <laughs> want to rip first? Because I'm behind. Yeah, you. let me go here. Oh, I got a, I got a silver thing here. Let me see. Thanks, Jesse. You can just put them up. We'll, we'll, we'll put yeah. a new display on after we get through these two. Luis Arias, Michael, Michael Chavez, Chavez, uh, Chavez. Oh, Chavez, Chavez, Chavez. Oh, I got a Mike Trout here. It's a nice card. Come on, it's Griffin. It's a common though. Or it's no? a common. Let me just okay. double back on the back. It's a common, but you know, you get Mike Trout. It's yeah. You, show you're it you're happy. If I'm it a young kid, I'm a young buck. kid getting my first pack. Yeah. Yeah. We got a little Wander Franco common though. Clayton, Andrew D. Benatendi. I didn't say that right. No, Benintendi. Yeah. We got um, Kendall Graveman, not numbered silver. Cody. See, Bellinger. if I get a Mike Trout card as a kid right now, I am so juiced. It's not necessary. I don't know, man. Like, oh, I hope I kids know. see it that way. Yeah. How about you, big dog? Did you open yours? Uh, no, I was waiting for you. So uh, let's no, see what we got. Comments. You got all commons? Yeah. I got John Gray, Tyler Malley, Jeter Downs. More cards for the wall. Our boy Reese Hoskins, miss you, man. Christian Yelich, our dude from yesterday. Vinny, Vinny Pasquantino, Pasquatch, who's probably at number one on my uh, target list of yeah. guests to get on the show because I want to ask him about the Pasquatch. I'm into it. Trevor Larnick, Gary Sanchez from the Twins, 
Dylan Bundy from the Twins, Christian Javier, and then I got a welcome to the 3030 Club, Larry Walker. It says WC13 on the top, but it, it's not. God, I think numbered. it's a common. It's still a common. Just take a look. Yeah, it's a nice card, though. I'm yeah. A, I'm a Colorado Do we have fan. time for one more? I think we – because Canley, I think we got th- two minutes. All right, let's do one more. Ah, one let's more. do one more. One more, let's baby. Go. I'm it's Friday. Take these All right, off, we worked hard this see. week. They're beautiful. That's why I do this job, so I can just rip packs and that's content. <laughs> we got we got a bunch. Let's, Let's go. go. I feel bad for Kratzy. Yeah, feel it out. Feel come on. Come on. I'm Let's super go. jealous. I'll be honest. I'm I'm super jealous. Oh, like you guys you're are supposed locked to be in. here, Kratzy. But you know, you can't make every Fraser uh, Friday, which is understandable. Know. I don't know. You can't. Know. You can't. No. And um, you I'm really bummed life. because Todd doesn't have the. Uh, I like watching Todd open it because he opens it like like he kind of like he sneaks it like he like puts one behind the other one. He's like oh. Oh, yeah. Blue Jay! I like, I liked it. Oh, oh, uh, yeah! I, got, I gotta get it. I gotta get him right first, and I, yep. it doesn't look too good again. Cattell like. Marte, Key Brian Hayes. But here's my thing for for this show's purposes. Paul Seawald, Hunter Green. You still read your comments because, like, sometimes yes. it brings something Brandon up Marsh, that's worth worth Matt mentioning. Scherzer, Cal Mitchell, got an old Cal Ripken card, but 35th anniversary. Max Kepler. AJ Minter. We got Jorge Alfaro. Pretty good arm behind the plate. No. Yeah. <gasps> Canon. El Canon. I got Jose Ramirez. What a hair this common. year, too. That I hair got three is. studs here that we can look doing. at here. It's a nice. I got studs, it's a too. Good I got, little, I got little Buxton little board. and Jose it Ramirez. They're, they're comments. I did get one non common. I got those Grisham. Some, what do you think of those, Eric? Those are three pretty good players. Uh oh. I got a numbered card. Oh, here That's we go. We got at least dangers. a number. At least a number. All right. 153 out of 499. Oh, okay. Hassan Kim. Who hasn't done a ton yet, to be honest? I mean, yeah. he's a great defender, Green but he hasn't hit a lot. He had the faculty. walk-off hit the other day. 153 out of 499. Yeah. Or so, so that's he, our best he one. If becomes so that, a thing. Padre spent good money on him, by the way. Probably a $10 card. That's $10 not bad card. at all. Okay. Nice that looks shiny. nice. That pops on on uh, YouTube Live. Nice. All right, we got something. We got I something. love that green. I love that green. And he might, yeah. he might be a guy in that lineup that the pitchers are like, oh, finally, I got through. the walk-off. The murderers row, and they're like, "I'm gonna go after Kim." So he might, he might sneak you, especially being like a veteran guy with experience. He hit that walk off the other day. Yeah, so he, he can is- handle short too. Um, I know he doesn't have to anymore with Bogarts, but that was the thing when he originally signed. They were like, "Yeah, he's a shortstop." What are the Padres doing? They got they have a few three hundred something million to Tatis. There's some teams that really like p- players that all play a certain position. Yeah, I think it was the reds that had like three or four like second baseman or something like that or maybe it was third baseman and they're like yo you gotta you gotta pick up some other position Mm -hmm. you can't just pick on the same guy i mean shortstop's different because they're athletic yeah you can just throw them around into different places no doubt you know yeah tatis is now an outfielder uh jazz chisholm who's a great athlete but he's learning on the fly so you're seeing it you know like he's going to be able to run him down but you know how it is. I it's mean, a huge ballpark, man. It, yeah, it's a big. That's a big uh, ballpark. That in Texas, I mean, there's. Listen, outfield's a different beast. I played out there a little bit. I got one assist in my career. I mean, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> but the thing for me is, it's different. The ball coming off the bat, you have to understand, like positioning wise. You're looking in. I had Billy Hatcher with the Reds. He'd always tell me, "Hey, Frazier," and he'd be pointing like, "Go!" And I took a step. He's like, "No," and we'd have to work on that. So. It's a process as an, as an infielder coming in to be an outfielder, and you don't want to lose. So in my biggest thing, when I had to go back to infield, Scott, my biggest thing was throwing. I, had, I almost had the yips a little bit because this is – we're going over the top outfield and a kind of like short arm infield. And I, I remember I would one-hop Votto all the time. He would pick it for me, thank God, because if he didn't pick it for me, I probably would have had 10 more errors. But, <laughs> and then eventually I came the infielder and it came back. But when you're coming from here – or I'll come down up here, and then you're throwing down here a little shorter arm angle. It's a different ball game, dude. So the guys that play all over the place, it's it's tough. Yeah, it's seen how the JD Davis. He's got a cannon of an arm, but he would throw too hard to first, and it would sail over Pete Alonso's head. So it just depends on how accurate you are, and you know the arm angles. Mm-hmm. They didn't, yeah, they didn't even put me in the outfield during during BP. I get <laughs> bad. I get bad hops on fly balls, like. I got no point in going out there. Like <laughs> that's funny. it's like it's impressive, especially it's one thing if you move like ch- Jazz from second base to left field, but they're putting them in a premier position in center field, and that's 
that's that's a tough transition. Yes, it is. I got one more thing I want to cover with you guys that I got a couple texts on. So I was like, yeah, I'll bring it up on the show. So there's been stories in the last 24 to 48 hours about the baseball, which is always a topic, right? And But this is more related to, hey, there's been a lot of pop early on in the season, more than, than we've seen, which it's been cyclical, right? Like sometimes you get a season where – Balls are going nuts again, leaving the yard. Um, it's it's happening again. There's been a lot of pop. So in addition to all the new rule changes and stolen bases leading to more offense and, and more balls getting through the infield because of the shift restrictions, I'll, I'll read you a little bit on the latest scientific spin to what's happening, which is hotter weather uh, the past summer has been contributing to home runs, a study finds. Hotter, thinner air allows balls to fly further, contributed a tiny bit to a surge in home runs ever since 2010. There's been statistical analysis by Dartmouth College scientists uh, that was published in a bulletin. I think it hit this morning. They analyzed 100,000 big league games and more than 200,000 baseballs put into play in the past few years, along with weather conditions, stadiums, and other factors. When air heats up, molecules move faster and away from each other, making the air less dense. So the baseball launched off a bat goes further through thinner air because there's less resistance to slow the ball. I mean, also just in general, to yeah. make it even simpler, at least the way I look at things, if it's warmer weather, and I think it's been somewhat mild here to start the season. Yeah. We've had many years where it's like, oh, it's snowing. Yes. It's 30 degrees in half the country. Like we haven't had as much of that. So my simple math is more like, okay, we've had a warmer year to start the season this year. And the, in general, it's warmer outside ball travels more I, there's an optimal temperature i've heard where it's like if it's too hot that that doesn't help but like i think it's in the 75 to 90 degree temperature range the ball is going to absolutely fly and there's a quote from dave dombrowski he said we always felt that way for years when it's warmer ball travels more they have scientific evidence to back that up i mean i, I think all of that's pretty obvious so the point is yeah if we're getting warmer weather in the country first of all I mean, I know huh. maybe long term it sucks, but on the short term, it's kind of nice that we don't have 30 degree baseball games and the ball's traveling further from it. Listen, they're trying to do everything they can with the baseballs now. We're trying to find a different ball so you don't have to use all this crazy stuff so you can get a better grip on the ball. Um, we've talked about that before. And now we're talking, I mean, it's, it's always been talked about how hotter weather the ball's going to travel. And that, that's always been something. So um, <clears throat> I don't care at the end of the day for me. If you got the power, you're going to hit the ball out of the park, okay? But when they do catch it at the wall, you're like, oh, it's got to be the weather. You can blame it on something. But, <laughs> of course, if you got that, uh, you know, light tower power, if you're Aaron Judge, you're not worried about it. You know, if you're a guy like me that needs those five or six home runs for arbitration or for, you know, um, whatever it is, you need it. But for sure, you want to play in a hotter weather. You, I, I'm, I'm curious if they took and figured out indoor places too as well. So – did they do stuff with, uh, you know, in Tampa or, you know, in Texas when they closed the roof, all that stuff, so 200,000 balls put in play. I find that phenomenal. And that's a lot of work. That's, that's a lot of there. work, but that's what the scientists do. Yeah. They, they are hardcore. They're not going to just study 20 baseballs. Yeah. They're like, Oh, we'll do two, 200,000. I mean, that's a science fair project. In seventh, eighth grade, I had a science fair project, not baseball wise, but I'm not bringing it up. Did like, you win? I actually did win because did you really? it was it was basically I took different cloth, whether it was uh, cotton, um, cashmere, like whatever it was, and I dipped it in water. Like so, my thing was, <laughs> it's funny that I didn't bring this up, but <laughs> if you're drowning, like, and you got this certain type of fabric on, you know, what fabric do you want on while you're drowning? You know, in in water, drowning prevention clothing. Yes, yes, and I I don't remember which one it was, you know, um, but. I, I, I took care of business. I, I got after it. Like, it was, it was phenomenal. <laughs> and you're laughing, but I got it. And, and the lady was like, you know what? Your presentation was great. This is a great finding. He got my ribbon, put it on. I got the blue number one, and away we went. So this is like a science fair project, but it probably took them years to figure this out. You, yeah, but you probably got commissioned by somebody in the Frasier family. <laughs> about putting people in the water and which one of these, hey, hey. which one of these clothes is going to get you to stay at the bottom? Oh, hey, listen, <laughs> how fitting that you Todd Father can't... Science Project's about drowning. <laughs> yeah, hey, and I wasn't the one that came up with that. I'm not going to tell you who, but listen, <laughs> you can't be saying that, all right? Because you are that, you are commissioned. You are no. commissioned by Uncle Tony. <laughs> no, but hey, maybe maybe some good some good people are watching what I did. And they're like, yeah. you know, good to know. 
Yeah, Good exactly. job, Todd. That's Good what. Job. That's how the Soprano started. Thirteen-year-old okay? Todd. <laughs> were, were kids? Were any kids jealous of you growing up because of the the little league stuff? And then, I mean, I, you're an athlete, and then you're winning science projects. I mean, you're a no. great dude. It's not from the personality, but I'm saying, like, you had a lot of accolades. I didn't realize you had the science fair. But- Championship <laughs> There's a bunch of accolades that we <laughs> probably take two, uh, the two-hour show to the limit. But, no, nah, man, when you're in the, the town I'm in, Tom's River, it's a great town. Everybody root for everybody. If they did, they kept it to themselves. And, um, yeah, that, that was it. This is a great town to live in. There was somebody There was somebody that definitely was, after you guys won the World Series, was like, whatever, man. I struck Todd out. I struck Todd out in Little League. Of course. Hey, listen. It happened. It happened, but few. There wasn't many. It might have been like one or two. Yeah. So we'll, we'll we'll let it go. Yeah, but a lot of people have those stories where they face someone that ends up in the big leagues, and they're like, "Yo, I yeah. faced so and so." I it get I get, I get that all the time when I go out or something like around town here, and you know, he had a couple many drinks. Yo, my buddy over there. Yo, he told me you struck you out in high school. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm like, all right. I'm like, what team he play for? He's like. I'll be right back. I don't know. That yet. So they go, they go, they come back. He's like, uh, he went to Raritan High School. I'm like, I don't think we played Raritan High School. <laughs> and he's like, you know what, dude? He was bullshit. And so sorry, man. But exactly. we just we just wanted to say hi or whatever. It is. <laughs> but you get the good stories like that. Hey, my man took you deep because I pitched it to him. Like, you know what? That probably happened. I, yeah. I, I agree on that. But okay. it, your response should be like, let's say you struck out like four times in all of high school or something like, oh, I only yeah. struck out four times in high school. And the uh, three of them were from, you yeah. know, so-and-so yeah, and the probably, other was from my buddy, whatever. Mine, so. yeah. Am I missing something? Did I miss a strikeout? Yeah, unbelievable. Hey, it's, it, it makes for good, good times going out. Yeah, exactly. All right. Speaking of strikeouts, here's our guy, Yankees reliever Tommy Canley, joining us right now. Be a regular on the show throughout the season. Ooh, he's got the nice <laughs> mic set up, too. He's got the headset. <laughs> the Baby, whole deal. Let's go, kids. Yeah, have to come from Pat. Tommy K, what's up, big dog? What's going on, Tom? What's up, bro? Nothing, How's it man. going, guys? I appreciate it having me on here. This is awesome. Hope no, y'all are man. doing well. You're, you're doing great, man. First off, we got to ask, how you feeling? How's the arm? How's the bicep tendonitis? You getting that thing cranking yet? What's going down with the arm? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, early on, it didn't feel great, obviously. In spring training, I wasn't feeling good. But uh, so I threw uh, today and two days ago, and so far, so good. It's only 60 feet, but, you know, I feel I feel like I'm back. I'm ready to roll. Hey, I, I, I read or maybe saw that you commented that there was a similar issue like five years ago and you were trying to pitch through it and then you were sent down because you weren't pitching at your best. So is that a learning experience this time around where you're like, hey, I'm a veteran now. I know my body. I've dealt with something like this in the past. I'm going to handle it the way that I want to. Yeah, I think uh, so. 18, I like I was young, you know, I was trying to like push through it, be a hero and do all that. And uh, it didn't turn out well. I pitched like shit. I got hit around. My mental state was all over the place. But uh, so this year, I I, as soon as it like I could kind of feel it, I was like, I I can't let this happen again. Next thing you know, my my whole year is out the window. It's it's in the shitter again. But uh, yeah, so I just kind of got ahead of it, talked to the trainers, and they they, they agreed, and we kind of slow playing it. And I mean, I'm a little older now, so I mean, I was I was hoping to be quick, but it turns out it might be a little slower than I thought. Hey, Tommy, tell everybody. Oh, everybody always asks me. Basically, they said, "Listen, you know, talk to me about the Yankees and how like what's the difference? Why are Yankees so like? Why is it so much better going to yeah, being on the Yankees than that? Because I heard you turn down money with Boston to come back." Like there's something I can't I can never explain it to somebody, but maybe you can enlighten me because I'm just like there's just something about it where you just feel better, you feel good. I, I don't know. You talk to me about that. I, I don't know. I mean, like you said, maybe it's like because we're we're from like the Northeast. Like I, I don't know. There's something just about being a Yankee that I mean, it's just different than playing for any other team. You know how we were at Chicago. Like it, it wasn't the same there. I mean, we went over to New York and it was like we were like embraced right away and it was just baseball was different there compared to when we were with the white Sox. but i mean i don't know <laughs> i really i don't there's it's something tough, different man. yeah it, it is hard to like you know try to nail what what's the reason why it's different it's just it is it's just different i, I think it's know? expectations for one they expect That's, you to be the best when you come in 
if you're not if you're not ready to go, like listen, like they're gonna move on and find somebody else. I think that's the yeah. number one thing what I tell people. I agree. Actually, that's a really good one. Is ex- expectations. I mean, the fans, you know how they are. They're they're crazy here. And I, it's, <laughs> I mean, I was one of them growing up. You know, upstate New York. I may have not been a Yankee fan, but you know, I was crazy kid yelling at the TV, yelling at the players. Like I didn't care. And <laughs> So I know how like how it is with everybody up here. Like it's just how it is. It's it's a northeast thing. And I mean, obviously being I used to be an Eagles fan. I know, I know we want to kind of get into that, but <laughs> <laughs> who are you rooting but, for now? Like who who's the team? Who are your teams? Nobody. I mean, I, I guess I, I like to watch the Jags just because Doug Peterson and the Chiefs now too, I guess. Andy Reid. Old school. Wait, why Eagles, did you the Eagles fandom? <laughs> Uh, I haven't told Kratzy why yet, but 2020, it started with the draft. I, they took the Rager kid. I was just like, uh, uh, it was just, <laughs> you know, started there. I was like, yeah, oh, gosh. And then they take the quarterback and I'm going, what is going on behind the scenes that I don't know about? So, you know, the whole year was a mess. I mean, they're, they were injured up and down and then pulled went. Okay. Whatever. That would I mean, I was, there's one, <laughs> but then <laughs> what really broke me was when they fired Doug. I think that's when I just, I lost it, lost it all. I said, I'm done. I literally told all my friends, my wife, I was like, oh, I'm done. I'm not an Eagles fan anymore. No way. Wow. That's crazy to just ditch a team like that. Only because, I mean, they just made it to the Super Bowl. Like they were a few good plays away <laughs> from winning a Super Bowl, you know, and Jalen Hurts is like the most dynamic quarterback in the game. So that's that's a serious divorce going mm-hmm. on here. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just like a quick, quick, easy, painless one for me. I don't know. That was it. <laughs> I'm going back through my I'm going back through my text thread right now and I'm gonna read you exactly what Uh-oh. Tommy K said. I was like, I mean, we're t- I mean, I'm ready to talk Eagles. I mean, Tommy Kaylee right now, like he's got his headset on, so he's probably just gaming. Yep. Like, if you like, we're gonna hopefully throughout this season paint a picture of what Tommy Kaylee is, and this is the platform for Tommy Kaylee. But I'm trying to find this thread. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, here we go. So sad we lost the Super Bowl. He goes, actually, sad news. You don't want to hear. I stopped <laughs> being an Eagles fan back in 2020. <laughs> Sirianni, Howie, and Hertz are dead to me. Once they leave, <laughs> I'm back on the train. Exact That's quote damn. from Very, Tommy Canley. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> this is a guy. This is a guy. Let me tell you guys. I mean, tell me, everybody that is listening out here, Tommy Canely would send me a picture of him in his oh, Eagles yeah. helmet, and then he would send a video after they'd win, and you'd hear him go, yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> Always. What the hell? And that's uh, it. It's and, then he, and then he divorced them. Not wrong. Not at all. Wait, what's it's wrong so with right. Jalen Hurts? Like, he's one of my favorite players in the game. What did he do wrong? Uh, I don't know. There's something I, I don't think he's a guy that's gonna win it, win it all. He almost won a Super Bowl just oh, now. He's do you incredible. want the rest of the text? Do you want the rest of the text? <laughs> Here's the rest of the text. That's what I said. I said, What's wrong with Hurts? Like, the guy's dynamic. You I gotta love, love this guy. He plays for the city. He goes, His words were, I can only imagine. Only two good quarterbacks in the league there right it is. now. I love there it. It is. Respect. Respect. Mahomes and Burrow. Wow. <laughs> Respect. Wow. Highest standards of all time. High. Highest of the high. <laughs> well, you're, if you're a semi Jags fan, like, that's Trevor Lawrence. Like, that's, he's not as good as Jalen Hurts. See? Nah. Probably not. No. This is wild. You still got the Notre Dame helmet, too, or what? Oh, yeah. They're never going to leave, Todd. Okay. I'm just, okay. I'm just making sure. Okay. Just making sure. Uh, yeah. Irish exactly. to the end of days. Tommy. <laughs> Tommy. Go through this, man, because you are your your passion is unlike anything else. And you talked about it with the Yankees, like that passion of the fan base. Like you are that guy. First of all, you said when I was a kid, I was yelling at the TV. You still yell at the TV. Oh yeah, still. But I wanna I wanna go through like the different sports you watch. You love Indy cars. You have jerseys. I mean, not Indy cars. F one. You have jerseys. You have s- soccer. What are your go-to teams and what are your go-to sports that you're like, 
yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> so I have it's like one A, one B right now. That's Notre Dame football, Carolina basketball. Uh, both didn't end well, but then we got uh, so soccer's big. I, uh, I follow uh, U.S. men's team and Bayern Munich pretty heavily. Then I'm big uh, NBA, NHL. Uh, I actually not with the Formula One. I don't really know much about it. I did kind of follow NASCAR for a while when I was a kid, but I mean, I'll watch a couple races here and there and kind of whatever, but what else is there? I mean, I started to watch this, uh, this spring I put on a uh, rugby. I thought it was awesome. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I, I was like, this is the, this, this shit's amazing. <laughs> I, I got in it was like ireland versus like scotland or something it, that was awesome do you have an all blacks jersey i should i need to get yeah one. <laughs> you should because he usually has like he usually has like 10 to 15 jerseys hung in his locker everybody else has like you know the giveaway jersey the tommy k strikes out the world jersey you know that they give out the, the shirt this guy's got jerseys galore. He needs to be a two-year deal guy because he needs the second locker. He needs to be big time. Like that. <laughs> That's great. Hey, Tommy, two things I know you love and enjoy. Tell me if they've changed so far. Well, actually, three things. Uh, tight pants, are they still there? Of course, come on. All uh, right, just making sure you got those <laughs> nice thunder legs for everybody to see. How, how's the Red Bulls? Are you toning down on the Red Bulls yet? The Red Bulls are definitely toned down. It's All right. Not we, Good. but there's that new stuff called A Shock or whatever. Okay. I, try, I don't go crazy with it, but you know, like two max three games. Yeah. When you get older, yeah. you kind of figure out you don't want those tension headaches after drinking all that caffeine. And number yeah, three, <laughs> number three, I know you're a big wrestling fan, so give me, give me your pe- the, your past and present wrestler who, if you met right now, you'd probably go bonkers right now. I'm gonna give you mine. The million dollar man Ted DiBiase. Yeah, I, I saw remember. him. I would go absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you telling me. Hey, yeah, with that man. lion's mane hair, yeah, brother. I, cu- I couldn't get it. He was nasty. That's why I love him. We got to get you that million dollar belt. I know we do. That's the. Yeah, I, I've been it? looking for that. I've been looking for that. But give me, give me your favorite past and present guy. Or girl. past, I mean, past is Sting and Bret Hart Ooh. for sure. Those, those two legends. And then, and, he, uh, and wait, right hold now, on. You, and I, you got, you got some. Didn't you have the Bret Hart outfit, right? Was I mistaken? Yeah, oh yeah. Didn't yes. I wear it at the oh. field a couple times? Yes, you did. <laughs> he wore the whole. Thing. He wore the whole <laughs> thing. Hey, but oh, he's got I the made body it. for I it. Made one. Yeah, he made it. He made it up. Oh, oh we, we gotta, gotta get find that a picture next time. <laughs> I gotta find it. How and about now? Fred, you still follow now? Oh yeah, WrestleMania was this past weekend. Yes, it was. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I started to really like uh, Cody Rhodes. And I do yeah. love the uh, Roman Reigns, what they got going with him. Awesome. So that, that matchup was huge. I loved it. Hey, Tommy, so you know, I was in a celebrity uh, wrestling match in, in oh, the off, off season. Yes, recently. And I was with Jerry the King. Me and Jerry the Come King on. Waller. We came out. I'm going to have to send you. We'll have to find that video <laughs> next time you're on. Send it to you. And listen, I was faking it. Like, I was taking yeah, I'll get him. Boom. <laughs> Go. And I would do, you know how we did it. I'd, I'd yeah, take the front and be like, the clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I would go up to people and I would take their head. I'd be like, and I'd, look, I'd, be, I'd be like, oh, boom. And then they'd fake it. And like he'd fake like he got hit in the head. It, I would just try oh and just God. mess with everybody. You remember that, man? Yeah, so oh, fun. yeah. That's the stuff I miss, man. And the bus rides with you were phenomenal. Everything about you made me laugh and everybody else laughed. We appreciated <laughs> everything about you. <laughs> Oh, man. How about, hey, how about Anthony Volpe? Talk about him a little bit, man. Did you get to talk to him a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. So, I mean, the kid's great, man. He, uh, he's like, you know, the young kid keeps his head down, smile on his face. He, uh, and he, he's hell of an athlete, man. I'm watching this kid. I'm like, fuck, this kid's fucking good. <laughs> Sorry for the <laughs> language, is. but. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Uh, it's safe this, here. You're good here. Yeah, the, he's good, man. I, I watch him every day. I'm just like, oh, man, this kid's the real deal. I'm watching him. So it's, uh, I, I'm, ex- I'm excited to watch him the rest of the way. And uh, I just, you know, it sucks that, you know, I'm at in New York while they're on the road. So I don't like to see the team and stuff, but it's going to be uh, pretty exciting this year to see him play. I mean, Everything that you know, the hype. I mean, it's it's true. I mean, I, I watch this, watch this kid every day. You're just like, yeah, it's there. 
I just hope that, and I, I don't mean this to slight him at all. I, I, I want him to be the next Jeter for Yankee fans, but I want him to be like more, more post game fun, you know, more yeah. personality, not the, you know, the cookie cutter. It's a different time period too. Yeah. Like it, does he have, does he have 80 grade potential for personality where he can drop a funny line? He can give you something good or is he going to be real buttoned up in your mind? Cause it's, it's Yankees. I'm, I want to be the next Jeter. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't know if he's gonna be like the the cookie cutter, but I think he's still, you know how it is when you're like you're a young rookie, and I mean everybody is around you. I, I'm sure he's probably you know a little kind of he's definitely still shy. I mean, you could see it every day, but well, he's a hard worker, man. That's what I admire the most is you know he comes in every day, gets his stuff done, works hard, does extra shit in the cage in the field. Like he's trying to get better every day. He lives, breathes baseball. I mean, that's that's definitely one thing you want to see. And uh, I mean, personality, he's a great kid, man. I talk to him a lot about he's a big soccer fan. So I, I get to talk to him a lot about that. And I bonded. In, uh, it was actually funny. I was in the tubs with him in spring training. And uh, I put a Kratz is going to love this. <laughs> I put on the 2000. I want to say it was like week 14. So I still watch old Eagles games, not Eagles fan. Uh <laughs> Eagles Giants game, and I go. I looked over at Volpe. I was like, "You alive for this game?" He goes, "No, I was born the next year." I go, "Oh my god, <laughs> that's phenomenal, dude!" <laughs> so, so you're, it. so you're the, so you're the veteran now. You're, you're one of the veterans. Can't even believe that. So you look back. I can't either because you're still a child, <laughs> and I love that every second because you need right. that. I think the Yankees need your energy in the bullpen. I think the Yankees just in general need your energy, but that's that's my opinion. But so you're the veteran. You look back, and you know where I'm going with this. You look back at like interactions with veterans that you've had. There's there's a lot of stories that happen in the game. That's like, ooh, I heard, I heard this, or I heard that. Mm -hmm. Tell us the story about you and what led up to you and Latroy Hawkins getting into it in the clubhouse. Oh, yeah, this, this one. I mean, this one's well known with a lot of, you know, teammates that I've played with. Obviously, you know it. Uh, just to kind of broaden the light. Uh, so I was a rookie. This was, what, 2014. It's, I'm with Colorado. I'm just young, just, you know, having fun. It's in the big leagues. It's, you know, this is what you always dreamed of. You want to get there, pitch, be in the big leagues. And uh, next thing you know, you know, I'm doing well the first half of the year, just going about my thing. And uh, so, you know, on the bus, bus trips, you know, um, you go up, you sing, you do a song. It's, you know, it's part of what it is. So I, I struggled bad with it for, for a while. And I would always get, you know, sent to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Go to the bar. <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. So finally did it. it. It had to be like finally got it done, you know, did it well. It was probably, you know, first first week of May. It took me about a month to get it down, you know. What are you going to do? But uh, everybody going crazy. Bus loved it. Fucking so high fives everybody as you're the back. Next thing you know, I mean, I don't know. He's, I don't know. I don't know. He just for some reason kept – being a dick to me. I didn't get it. Uh, so after months of that, just, you know, just constantly getting, you know, stuff to my locker. I mean, all kinds of stuff, jerseys cut. I don't know all that crazy stuff. Uh, basically just getting hazed out of my mind. And uh, I mean, it just seemed like, I, you know, I get the one that was picked on the whole time, but uh, I, I probably could have done some things different. You know, I mean, I was young, you know, immature. I don't know. Still probably a little immature, obviously. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it just kept going on all year, all year, all year, all year. And then finally, at, uh, I forget, where were we? San Diego. So we come in. Uh, we had a road trip into San Diego. We did our rookie dress up. It went great. I was a clown. Everybody else was like swimmers. So I got singled out for it. Shocker. <laughs> but uh so uh it all went well and uh next thing you know we're leaving san diego to go to la and there was just like something in my locker and i was like what the hell is this and my, my buddies kept telling me like you know out of vino uh 
Scahill back then, Friedrich, that, you know, they think something's going to happen. I was like, oh, God, here we go. So I go to the locker. I look at it. All my clothes are gone. Backpack's gone. Everything's gone. It's just this this skimpy leopard print. I don't even dress or so. I don't even know. I was like, I'm not wearing this. I'm not doing this anymore. Basically, I put up with this all year. I mean, I can go into more detail, but I'll, I'll let that be. But but uh, there was just so much stuff that it finally boiled over. <laughs> so <laughs> it got to a point where we were going to the buses because I think we were taking the buses from San Diego up to L.A. And uh, I just got like, he like stopped me in you know the hallway. And I was like, what are we doing here? Yeah, he's like, oh, you're not going. There. I was like, I'm going to the bus, man. We need to get out of here. I'm, I, we're going to, the, we're going to LA. Let's get out of here. There's three more games. There's three more games. I want to go. Let's get here. Then we go, go home. We stink. Let's get it over with. Uh, so eventually, I don't know what happened. It's like we're in the clubhouse. Everybody's still kind of in there. Next thing you know, uh, I don't even remember. Like I was chirping. He's chirping. He drops his backpack. I don't know what's. I'm like, what's happening? He shoves me i shove him back next thing you know we're in scuffle and i look down and i got him a headlock and that was it he was out <laughs> you went to sleep yeah it was uh pretty uh yeah <laughs> then the manager comes in yells all that stuff you know ah, i'm yelling back everybody's telling me to shut up it, it was a, it was a shit show but yeah that's <laughs> not, not well he woke up yeah yeah, yeah. Listen, at the end of the year, man, it's it's over with. I, I agree with you yeah. 100%. Like, let, let it be. You're not a, you're basically not a rookie anymore. You have three to five games left. Like, come on, dude, yeah. let it be. And when stuff like that boils over, there's almost so much you could take, man. And then you sometimes you black out. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, mean, I was just – that was it. I had enough. It was over. Uh, also, some team – like, did, did the Yankees do that? They did that. Did they pick on Judge that much? Because I wouldn't want to mess around with him for too long. There's no freaking way. <laughs> no, there's, there's, no. no they, they don't. You know, like the coffee yeah. run from the Brewers the yeah. other day. That's cute. Yeah, that's no. fine. They, I know? think that they stopped all the kind of, lack of a better word, yeah. amazing things yeah. a couple years ago. But, yeah, I remember the one time I had to dress up like a baby and walk six blocks in New York uh, with a binky. <laughs> it was like six guys. <laughs> <Yeah. binky. laughs> What, what the heck's going on? Like it, yeah, it used to be like uh, a lot of it was always playful, and then it got to a point where it started to get like real personal. I was like, this is, yeah. yeah, this ain't happening. But yeah, Ty, you cool. know, like it, it's yeah. it's cool. Like it's, I've always seen it where it's fun and stuff. Yeah, it got to yeah, it got taken to a point where it just you know. It was if there's only I don't care how old you are. There's only so much you could take, man. And you know the. Yeah. Especially during those times, like, all right, man, chill out, man. He, you know, you have him saying you're one of the worst teammates ever. Listen, you know, I've had some rookies when I was all of that, you know, I didn't like either. But at the end of the day, I still had conversations with him. Yeah. I wanted to get to know him. There's some guys that don't want to get to know you. It's like, bro, as when I get older, I want to know every guy from the, the rookie all the way up. Like, if I was playing Anthony Volpe, man, I want to get to know you a little bit. And LaTroy, for, to do that, man, it's like, come on, dude. Yeah, it was, it was tough. I mean, next year we come in, you know, we high five, shook it out, and that was it. Squash. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All good, man. All, All right. Let me, let me take it because there are a couple more things I want to cover here. But let me take it back to something we talked about just for a second before. So I just want to get like the inside word on how this is because I know Red Sox and Yankee fans would appreciate this too. Big league players are often about money and contracts in the offseason. Fair, right? Fair. Like if, you, if a team offers you 20 mil and the other offers you 35, mm. you're going to 35. Most likely. Most yeah. likely, yeah. <laughs> now, you, I mean, and this was talked about a little bit, but I just want to get the inside story. Red Sox offer more money in the offseason than the Yanks, and you're like, I've been with the Yanks in the past. I like them. No thanks. Because that's, that's good shit. I mean, Yanks and Red Sox are rivals. Like – Tell me your side of how that all went down, the conversations and the whole deal, whatever you can share. Yeah, I mean, so I don't know how everybody is pretty crazy. I think it got kind of blown up, but it was very, so it was very similar is what it was. But I, but uh, at the end of the day, I mean, there was I'm just looking at it and I'm like, you know, I got this place over here. I've never been to. It's still in the Northeast. Never been here. And we got this place. You know, I know a lot of the coaches. Still a good amount of the players loved it there. I was cherished there, so it's like my fa- it's even closer to my family. I have even family in the city, so it, it ended up just becoming. And then kind of like I kind of looked at it like, who do I think really is ready to win now? Even though you know it was still before Judge resigned, but for some reason I had like that little, you know, I 
was like, Judge is coming back. There's no way he's going to San Fran. That's crazy talk. Next thing you know, I mean, it was literally what? Next day he signed with the Yankees. So I was like, I'm going back to New York. There was, it was like, I woke up that morning, told my wife Veronica, and I was like, we're going to New York. She's like, really? I was like, yep, we're going. So that was the end of the day. And you talk about Judge, too. But what about the text thread going on here? He don't text me back either, don't you? Yeah, right. Know. What the heck's so, going he on changed here? His number? <laughs> yeah, he changed his number. I didn't even know. So, like, he, uh, I texted him that day. I was like, damn, I got to make a decision tonight. And uh, I don't know. So, I'm like, he's, I got crickets. I'm like, shit. What? I was like, he's blowing me off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Uh, what was the deal? Was like, Did yeah. he change his number? Yeah, so he changed his number. I found out when I got the spring. I was like, well... Shit, that could have saved me a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot of time, exactly. a lot of stress. I was like, "Jeez." You were oh, stressed. Man. You were stressed that you hurt Judgey's feelings on your way out the door. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to hurt the big fellow's feelings, and no. you just wanted to. You just wanted to catch up with the guy. I get it. I've I've been there, man. Like he's the guy you want to be around. Besides you, everybody wants to yeah. be around Tommy, of course. Yeah, Tom. but he probably also heard he was chit chatting with Boston, and like for Judge, he's lifetime Yankee guy. He's like, don't don't talk to my rival, yeah. or I'll change my number. <laughs> All good. I love it. Hey, Tommy. Well, it was awesome having you on. We appreciate it. We're looking forward yeah. to having you on throughout the season, and and get yourself right, and then we'll see you on the field soon too. I think by the by the next time we talk, could could be on the on the uh, on the mound again. We're excited for it. All right, awesome. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, I can't wait to get back. You guys got to see the changeup again. You know? Oh, Let's hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's one of my favorite hey, he, pitches. He threw me first time a 3 2 changeup and <laughs> walked me. I'm, I'm yeah. still mad until this day at this point. I said, come no. on. He had, a, he had a 98 mile an hour fastball. Yeah, but his changeup is ridiculous. Yeah, well, I spit on it. I said, throw me the heat. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different game now. Love different you, brother. Game, I appreciate you. Yeah. We love you. Thank you, man. Thanks, Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> See you, oh, Later. See you. No, that's the thing nowadays, though. You're a reliever. You got you got your arsenal. Yeah. I, I get you know, it. it's funny. It was either last year or the year before. I was doing a game, and it was a shitty team. And I was like, "Give me an example of like what's wrong with this team." I think I don't remember if I was I was talking to somebody within the ball club. It's either yeah. player manager or, or front office yeah. person. He goes, "Let me give you an example." He goes, "There's a guy on the mound, and he's pitching really well. We're getting like blanked through like four or five innings." And our guys are chirping at him, being like, "Yo, you, you're weak. Throw your heater more. You're yeah. weak." And I'm, and this guy's telling me, he goes, yeah. "Are they like stuck in the freaking '90s? Like that's not how the freaking game works no, anymore." They're like, sliders, "Go get a knock." You're yelling at the guy that he's soft because he's not throwing enough fastballs. Blame, he's shutting your ass out. Blame that guy with the backwards hat. Stop putting down the damn slider on on a three zero count. Yeah. See, <laughs> Tommy. Hey. Tommy Topper over here. Todd's Todd Todd's definitely a dude. Hey, throw me that fastball, bro. <laughs> hey, where's your ball? Let's go. Hey, I, That's I, what I'm saying. I tell him. I, I, I'm throw the heater, Johnny. What yeah. are you doing? <laughs> throw throw him the heater, like. Tommy's changeup is one of the elite pitches. Yeah, when he went to, that's why he went to the Dodgers. Mm-hmm. That pitch is. And we'll get into it another time when he's on. That pitch is something else because it's not a splitter. Like when you see a changeup that's like that nasty, normally it's a splitter. This it's a pitch, and he's a guy. When he's healthy, he is a guy, and he's an energy. He's a vibe in that bullpen that I think the Yankees the Yankees need. And I and I say that all the time. When you start seeing teams just slapping hands and not really celebrating their victories, Tommy Canely, he's he, what what did he call those energy drinks? I forget, I forget what he called it. I a forget. source. That's some new, some new, <laughs> some new stuff. He used to take, he used to take these pills that were like they would hand them out in the clubhouse, and they were just caffeine pills. But he, he called them, he called them his boner pills. He'd be like, <laughs> "Yeah, baby, yeah," and he would start taking them, and he would just be in the bullpen. And the bullpen in in uh, New York, it's you know, it's plexiglassed off, so you're like yeah. in a room. It was like. Harky would be in the bullpen. Bullpen coach was like, oh, my gosh. He's like, can't handle Tommy in a closed room. And Tommy would go out, and he would sit on the bench outside by himself, and he would be yelling at Judgy. He'd be like, yeah, yeah, Judgy. And Hicks was playing center. He's like, Hicksy, baby. And that's when you knew Tommy was ready to go. 
That is incredible. That is, I mean, but they said he's beloved there. Like beloved. they love him. He's Absolutely. a character. You need that. They love characters. You always. need that. Absolutely. Um, all right. Time for uh, a little slap hands action. Um, I'm gonna. There we go. Let's go, baby. I'm gonna start because um, I don't always do it, but when there's a notable birthday, I'll throw it out there. This one's very specific because I've got. Padres beating the Braves tonight mm. to try and stay sizzling hot. Josh Hader, happy birthday. Nice. Okay. It's 5 2 in the ninth. You're in ATL. Maybe a guy or two on. And he's going to shut the door and say, Bring Happy left. birthday. Let's go, baby. I go Adrian Beltre, man. One of my yeah. idols growing up, man, at third base. Uh, happy birthday, Adrian. I don't know how old you are, dude, but you did it right, man. Yeah, ageless wonder when he was playing. He was good right until the finish line. Kratats, what do you got today? Guy's gonna be a Hall of Famer too. Yeah, Talking about Beltre, right not that's Very a true. first first ballot. Now we're going. I still get, this is the next one that came out. Nobody knows what that is. What is that? Nobody. That's it's not a minor league hat, so you wouldn't know. But this is the EMU Royals, my college. These hats, when we were seniors, we didn't like our hats, or maybe juniors. I'm not sure. We didn't like our hats, so our coach was like, "Well, if you don't like the hats." Design your own hat. So what we did was we took the the R. Remember the company Rusty? No, no. You don't remember Rusty? No, I know Rusty Coons. Yeah, yeah, Rusty Coons, first base coach. <laughs> That's a good hat for him. No, no. This was this. These are Rusty. The company was Rusty, and so we took that R, and there was like a little dot on it. So we erased the R, and they became our hats. And so these were our these were our college hats. I still got it to this day, rocking it. Kratz hats in full effect. Let's D3 go. D3 college style. All right. I got, I got one more thing I want to ask you guys about, and let's throw this up while I'm asking you. So, cause this is the first of many and we're going to get very involved on this cause it's nerfy Fridays mm -hmm. from our friends at bed MGM. Um, some easy steps to get involved. And here, as you're doing this, I want help on one of the late games, please, that I'll follow. So either Nats Rockies, Blue Jays, Angels, or Dodgers D backs. Pick a game for me where there's going to be no runs in the first inning. Like you might think, oh, Nats Rockies, one nothing game yesterday. It's in Colorado. No. You've got Jose Arena and Mackenzie <clears throat> Gore. And I can give you no. lines for any of those. Um, but help me out here, and I'll, uh, I'll show you what we're talking about again. But for something that we're paying attention to I would in the say first the inning, Blue where Jays. am I going? I would go, uh, no, not Blue Jays, uh, the Angels game. Angels game. Yeah, do you mean Dodgers Diamondbacks? No, Dodgers. Right. I, I would go Dodgers Diamondbacks. You think there'll be no runs in that? I don't one? think there'll be any runs in that. Let's see what the line is. And in, in, in the first inning you're talking about, right? Yeah, just no runs first yes. inning. Yes. Kratzy, do you agree? You well, you took mine, but I, I, that's okay. No, that's fine. We can do one. I, yeah. I want just one. That's the I one. That's the one I was thinking of. Um, but I think I think you know I think there's a chance in the in the Braves in the Braves Padres game. Nick Martinez usually does better early, and a rookie. I think, you know, the rookie will go up against the, you know, the Padres lineup first time through. No runs. Kershaw Bumgarner, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, go I'm going no runs. No, I like that. I like that for Nerfy Fridays. I'm going to tell Frasch. All right. I think Padres might, might smack around Schuster and get a run or two in the first. So here's the deal. Opt in to the promotion. Place a no run first inning bet on any MLB game. So, AK, you got to bet no on will there be a run in the first inning. Uh, if your bet loses but only one run scored during the first, you receive a bonus bet equaling your stake up to 25 bucks. Bonus bet will be reflected once the wager is settled. It's only happening on Fridays. Make sure to read the full terms and conditions of this promo before participating. Always bet responsibly. Gambling problem or concern? Call 1-800-GAMBLING. And Your lastly, money. we have to give Frege a chance to respond here. Uh -oh. You got to throw the poll up there because <laughs> AJ was all over you. But mm. you have some analysis on how these polls go because you have fans of AJ. You got yeah. fans of you. You got fans of the White Sox. It's not, it's not even a real poll. If you want the truth, we had over 95,000 people look at it. Oh, who had the better first pitch. Yeah, but it's not the best. Yeah, almost 100,000 views so, on it. Yeah, and we only had 915 votes. Yeah, so. that's because a lot of people no. are scared to no. piss one of you guys no, off. No, not that. Here's the thing. That's a we, lot of we, votes, by we, the way. We put it up, all these weird rules. Who had, the, who had the better first pitch? No, we the bet the bet was who threw the strike better or who threw a strike. I was the only one to throw a strike. He threw it a foot outside or inside, depending on who's hitting. 
he might have threw it harder because he was, that's AJ, trying to top everybody. But for me, <laughs> it's who threw a strike. And I was the only one that threw a strike. So, you know, the brass of foul territory, we got to talk a little bit, right? We got to make sure you come through me before we put that up because the bet was who threw the strike. And I was the only one that did it. So there shouldn't even been a vote. Should have been 100% towards me. <laughs> Bottom line. Kratzy, you be the judge. I mean, here's what I say. If neither can win, I say the prize goes to me. So both of you need to send me. <laughs> there you go. Here's the good news, though. We've got those baseballs. We're going to work on a little giveaway action yes. at some point. We've got yes, both we of those first pitch baseballs, and we'll get them signed and figure something out. So stay tuned on that one. And uh, happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Frasier Friday, people. Enjoy your games. Good luck on your Nerfy Friday. Good luck to me. I got a lot of pressure. It's been taking me a long time to come up with my locks because I don't want to lose. But, you know, all good things come to an end. Yes, they do. I, I, I you think hope, I'm I okay tonight? tonight? Who you I got want... tonight? Braves or Padres? I'm going, I'm going Braves. Oh. Oh, sorry. Uh, we'll be texting all yeah. night. Love that. Love that. See you guys. Next week, we are announcing new hosts. We're not getting rid of these guys, but new hosts joining us. And they are... Oh, sorry, my mic just got cut off. You'll see him next week. Three new hosts on FT Live. <laughs>